Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and I am so excited because after years of waiting for me, it is finally the day. I'm gonna crack open a Time Spiral Remastered Booster Box. I'm gonna keep the camera rolling the whole time. I'm gonna tell you all kinds of stories about the original Time Spiral set, about the bonus sheet cards, the design of this set. It's all there. I don't know what we're waiting for. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Time Spiral Remastered Booster Box. Here's what it looks like. History retwisted. See all the fun text on the outside, but I know what we all want to do is crack right into it and see what's here. So let's get into it. Let's get this packaging right off of here. I waited so long to do this. I have never opened a pack of Time Spiral Remastered. We didn't get samples uh, in the office before COVID hit. I didn't get any sent to me. So this is it. This is my first ever packs of Time Spiral Remastered. Crack open that top there. Boom. Check out those gorgeous sidewinder slivers, I think. Staring back at me. All right, we're going to set these up here. And let's just start getting into it. Starting with this guy right here. All right, my first ever pack of Time Spiral Remastered. Let's see what we got. All right. Kick it off. We've got Keldon Halberdier. Suspend is really strong in Time Spiral Block Limited, so if you're drafting on Magic Online or otherwise... Um, even though this looks kind of okay, well, it's five, five mana, four, one, first strike. No, for spend four, one mana, it's great. It comes down four turns later, and you invested only one mana into it. Keep in mind, the first strike on defense, really, really powerful. Um, back in Time Spiral the first time around, this was a card everyone undervalued, and then by the end of the format, people really, really wanted around. So, 4C, what an amazing, amazing card draw spell. This was, by the way, Future Sight had the return of Scry, after um, its last set being in Fifth Dawn, because it wasn't an evergreen mechanic back then, which is really cool. Fun note about this version of 4C with this artwork, this is a visual trick, these four eyes right here. The human eye doesn't quite know how to perceive this. Just try looking at it. Your, your eye doesn't quite know what to do because it's such an unusual construction. Um, this is a, uh, an artistic visual trick you can do, and I thought it was very clever that it was put on this card. Of course, the pun with the name 4C. Thrill of the Hunt. Talk about cards which went way up in value in draft um, the more you drafted this set. This is a combat trick that only gives plus one, plus two, but the fact that it works twice and just for one mana each time, if you are green-white, you're going to want this in your, in your deck. Destroying tap creatures for three mana. This card is a reference to Royal Assassin. That's what's going on here with Assassinate. Um, you even have that kind of art gag of the of the, uh, the blood coming down and then the one eye being full, like the Royal Assassin had. So this is a reference back to a, a very classic magic card. Search for Tomorrow with brand new artwork, this modern staple, commander staple, finally getting some new artwork here, which is pretty cool. Really glad to, to have this one in, in the set. Also a card you're totally happy to pick up and play, easy to splash. Temporal Isolation, so this is a removal spell. Um, it, it's got a lot of words on it, but the basic gist is for two mana, it's a pacifism with flash. There's some tricky stuff that can happen. Um, you know, it does give the creature shadow, and even its attack trigger stuff will still occur. Um, but you can cast this inside of combat, even after your opponent is blocked, if something goes horribly awry, to prevent the damage by it. There's a lot of tricks you can be run with this card in particular. Um, so, yeah, if you're drafting, draft this one pretty highly. You very rarely, rarely put this on your own creatures. It's a little worse now because you can't put damage on the stack, but um, still, it's, it's quite strong. Bewilder, give something minus three minus and draw a card. This card wasn't great the first time around, but I think it's maybe a little bit better in this set just based on, on how the, the draft environment ended up. But yeah, this card's okay. You'll, you'll play it sometimes in limited. Um, Ivory Giant, right? Tapping all non-white creatures when it enters the battlefield. Another really strong suspend card. There was a pro tour um, where Mark Herbaholtz and a few others had pioneered the strategy of just force mono white every time. And it was partially on the back of this card. It was a triple time spiral block pro tour. You just wanted to draft as many ivory giants as you could, play mono white. It comes off suspend on turn six and use attack and you know maybe kill them or bring them very, very low. Um, so yeah, ivory with giant, regardless of if you're doing that or not, a key card. Know that it'll tap your own stuff if you have um, non-white creatures in your deck, but this is a really important limited card. And an iconic card for Time Spiral Block to me. Another iconic card, this um, this little tapper. We don't really make a lot of two-mana tappers these days, or, you know, creatures that can easily tap your opponent's creatures. Um, they're really powerful. We make them every now and then. Um, but the big big deal here is this is a rebel, so you can tutor it up with your Blight Speaker, with your Amru Scout. Um, so, yeah, look for that rebel type all around. It's pretty important. 
spore sower thalid. So um, the return of funguses and thalids and uh, and saprolings are was a pretty big deal for this set. In fact, thalid was on the original bonus sheet. This card basically doubles your production, putting a counter on all your funguses every single turn. So this is an awesome card. It's four mana, four four already, so it's an easy pickup. But yeah, if I was drafting this pack, this would be a card that came to mind pretty quickly, as well as the Wrathy Trapper probably is my top two cards from the pack currently. Cloud Seeder. Um, so in Future Sight, there was a cycle of Spell Shapers that made creature tokens of existing magic cards. Um, normally Spell Shapers cast spells because these were from Future Sight. They were from the future. Anything is possible. And they made uh, tokens. Um, I'm really excited that in this set, the ones that exist in this set, um, we made tokens for those cards. Um, original Times Far Block didn't have tokens, so you'll see a maybe token here in a second. You'll definitely see some more as we crack open the box, but Cloud Sprite is a token that exists here, which is which is pretty cool. Um, enables your Madness Unlimited, too, so keep that in mind. And I know some people online uh, in the comments will be like, how am I going to draft this set given the world right now? Totally agree that uh, it might be hard to play paper um, right now, um, but on Magic Online, the set will be available, and you can draft it over and over and over again, which I, which I highly recommend doing. So Vanishing is a play on Fading, a mechanic that showed up in uh, Nemesis. And this is a different take on it. The reason why it's different here is twofold. One, it was felt that it was more intuitive to have it die when you remove the last counter instead of when you couldn't remove the counter, which is just true because Blaster Drum, you would tick down to zero counters and still attack with it, which is weird. But the second thing is that it uses time counters, and there's some things in the set that care about time counters, a few time manipulation cards. Um, so this is one that you can speed up with, with those. This card is generally, like, not super strong. It's okay if you've got a strong enchantment in your deck, but, um, you know, you can take it, you can play it in limited if you if you need the body, but it's not bananas. Hey, Extirpate. Very nice. Uh, this is a card that I've seen a lot of player of the year. When this when um, um, Planner Chaos was previewed originally, this card was the hotness. Like, everyone was talking about this card and how they were going to make people discard their card on turn one and then Extirpate it out. And, of course, these cards are always a little bit overhyped, but still... This is one that's seen a lot of play over the years. Um, notably that it can hit um, non-basic lands, so you can get all the Tron, for example, if you blow it up. So that's something to watch out for with this card. All right, so that's extra pay. Then we're going to go to bonus sheet card now. First bonus sheet card ever I get. ho ho Well, this is a welcome beginning to my Time Spiral Remaster experience. There it is. True Name Nemesis in the old frame. That just looks so cool. I am so happy we got to bring bring back these retro frames. Um, this was a culmination of a lot of work by our production team. So big shout out to everyone who worked on this, and um, you know David Stevens and Tom Wannerstrand and Jess Lanzillo for getting the frames right. Yeah, huge huge shout out. And uh, this turned out so good. And what a what a first one to open. That is that is a nice one. I guess I'll make a little stack of my rares and a bonus sheet cards. I might have a foil here. It feels a little on the thick side. Yep. Foil Tendrils of Corruption, very nice. This is a reference to the card Corrupt, which uh, deals damage to anybody, and you gain X life equal to your swamps. This one can't hit players, but it's still quite good, instant speed. Uh, this card was so defining to, to Time Spiral block constructed because of the card Urborg, which makes everything swamps. So you would constantly be firing off Tendrils for six, seven, eight life. You in, in the format, the control decks, the Mystical Teachings decks would play this card, they'd play Urborg, they'd play 28 lands, Mystical Teachings defined it, it was huge. So much so that this card called Kavu Predator, which um, gets plus and plus one counters when every opponent uh, when every opponent gains life, became a card that was being played in block constructed. Anyway, fun history fact for you. But yeah, this card is it was quite a big deal back in the day. Now, just a solid limited card. And then, hey, look at that. So it, it's not the um, it's not the Cloud Sprite. This is Metallic Sliver. This is brand new art for a uh, Sliver Smith, which is a card in the set which you can discard a card to create a Sliver token. So that is pretty cool. Love that new uh, sliver art by Carl Critchlow. And of course, one of the things about the re remastered sets is um, they, uh, at least the paper ones, because on Arena, it's not really a thing as much, because um, they're, they're only doing the recent ones there. But um, for the, the paper one, we are um, upgrading the experience by putting things like tokens in packs, which didn't exist the first time around. So really cool to, to get that here and in the new card frame and everything. So that's great. Commander, draft, and every form in between. Magic Online, there you go. You can play this set right there. All right, well, very good. I'm going to make my stacks like this to start, I guess. We'll put the uh, foils, rares, and bonus sheet cards over here. 
I'll just fan through them as, as we keep going through. All right, Stuffy Doll on the front of this pack. Let's crack in and see what we get. It is so nostalgic to see these cards again. I mean, this is one of my, one of my favorite draft formats of all time, which is why I chose, um, chose it for this remastered set. Uh, Morph, yeah, Morph is back. This is a reference to all the many sea serpents that exist in Magic history, um, and uh, how it you know you need an island on your opponent's side to be able to attack. The clever part here is even if they're not blue, um, you can morph this down, attack, and then turn it face up while it's attacking, and it'll still be attacking. So one of those wild synergies in um, in Time Spiral, or not not synergies, but uh, wild uh, rules things you should know to play your cards. And if you look down there in the artwork, there's this little spidery guy. Um, Back in Onslaught, and in this set as well, the um, morph creatures popped out of spiders, these weird clay spiders. It was a kind of an unusual visual choice, but that's that's what it was. Um, and so you see that in the background, a lot of the morph cards in this set. Two-headed sliver. Slivers, big deal. Um, fun fact about this sliver, though, it used to have this written out. Now it perfectly says all slivers have menace. So that, that's pretty cool. Menace didn't exist as a keyword when this set came out originally. Uh, the Sliver deck can be very strong. It is centered in Naya colors here. So if you're drafting green, red, white, pick up Slivers. Uh, not, not quite as many in, in blue and black. Sarkamite Mirror. Um, so this card was in Future Sight as a preview of Worlds to Come and kind of hinting at uh, New Phyrexia at the time. It was thought that New Phyrexia was going to go really heavy into colored artifacts. Turned out those ended up being used other places, and it didn't quite go that way as much. Um, but my favorite fun fact about this card is this is the only card that has flavor text, at least at the time, that referenced a Brutoclad, Telcor Engineer. And when we, when we were working on Commander 2018, I went over to Kelly Diggs, and I was like, hey, I have this idea for this blue-red legend. Uh, what, what do you think? And without skipping a beat, he's like, oh, well, that could be Brutoclad, which is wild considering that it is a one piece of flavor text card on a card in Future Sight, but, um, but Kelly nailed it, and... This is the card that basically spawned the creative behind Brutoclad Telcor Engineer in Commander 2018. Pretty cool. Feebleness, this is a, a reference to the card Weakness, which is black, black, gives a creature minus two, minus two, and is an enchant creature without flash. Time Spiral Block, of course, full of references, so I'll try and, and call them out as, uh, as they show up. Fine Limited card. Edge of Autumn, this is from Future Sight. Kind of a wonky ramp card in that it can ramp you early, early on. You know, for two mana, you can go find a basic land early, or late game, you can cycle and sack a land to draw a card. It was played a lot back in the day with Flagstones of Trocare, because you could sack your Flagstones for basically free to cycle this and make your Tarmogoyf bigger, back when it was a lot harder to make your Tarmogoyf bigger than it, it maybe is today. Um, but this is still a totally solid limited card as a two mana ramp spell that also um, is active as an extra card draw late in the game. So... Nice pickup. I think this is maybe the first time, maybe not the first time. <clears throat> it's probably been somewhere else, but it's in the not in the future site frame, which is what the original version was. So, psychotic episode. Um, this card was key in original time spiral block for getting Sprout Swarm out of your opponent's hand. Now, Sprout Swarm is not in this set, so um, you don't have to worry about that one. But still, it's a coercion style effect that also hits the top card of their library. One thing about discard effects is often they become worse late in the game because your opponent's out of cards in their hand, um, you know, they don't really have a lot to grab. The fact you can look at the top card of their library is uh, is pretty nice for being able to, you know, if they've got one card in their hand and a card on top, even if they're just holding a land, you can kind of get a bit of deck manipulation that way and, and maybe get rid of a good draw. So that's cool. Brand new art on Chromatic Star. You can expect to see this in, a, I'm sure, a modern table or popper table near you. And um, I made it, I'm not going to retell the whole story because I previewed this card just the other day, just yesterday, but um, this was created as a fixed Chromatic Sphere, because Chromatic Sphere had some weird issues with having you draw cards face down into your hand, and for more, more information, you can watch watch that video. Uh, I I've always loved Fortify as just a really solid, white, um, white aggressive card, because you can either, you know, kill off all your, kill off your opponent, plus two, plus oh, all your stuff, or it's a great defensive trick, and I think defensive tricks can be pretty underrated, especially in um, aggressive mirror matches, so... This card is not to be trifled with, and especially in your decks with Ivory Giant, as mentioned earlier, that mono-white strategy, really key card for those decks. Dirkwood Balath, yeah. I, when I think of Time Spiral Block, I think of turn one, suspend Dirkwood Balath, turn two, suspend Aaron Ephemeron. They both come off on turn four, and you're attacking with nine points of power. Do not underrate these suspend creatures if you get the chance to draft this set. It is a really, really, really big deal. They are quite strong. Also sets up stuff like Storm, um, 
So, yeah. This is a reference. Uh, Dirkwood Boars is a 5-5 five, five for 5 mana. Uh, this is a Bailoth that suspends, so um, that's what the Dirkwood is referencing here. Pretty sure it's a 5-5 five, five for, for, for 5 mana. Um, Crookclaw Transmuter flips power and toughness. Another card that um, is a little worse without damage on the stack, but still quite strong. Really easy to kill off one of your opponent's creatures out of nowhere with this. Um, uh, something you wouldn't necessarily think of off the bat is that you can play this down and flip its own power toughness to make it a 1-3 flash blocker, so keep that in mind when you're playing it. It's pretty cool. Joda's Avenger. Yes, what a throwback to the card Urza's Avenger. It's funny, now Joda is probably more well-known than he was uh, when the set came out, because at the time he was just a character from the Ice Age novels. Now he's properly had a card in Dominaria. This card has always been a card that you read and you're like, why these effects exactly? Um, I'm sure I could do an episode looking up the exact reasons why these effects were chosen. Um, but uh, it, it, make no mistake, this card can be quite good as, as making it a 3-3 three, three double striker or a 2-2 two, two, um, uh, two, two double striker with shadow that's basically unblockable to hit in for four every turn. So, um, yeah, this is a card that you will close out with in your long game blue decks. Arcblade. Uh, yeah, this is there's a cycle of clever cards in Future Sight um, that are these cards with suspend that resuspend themselves. It's like Arcblade, Chronomatic Escape. Um, uh, I, those are two that I, the only two that come to mind at the moment, but uh, I think there's one for every color. Uh, Arcblade um, deals two damage and goes back. So yeah, this is a great removal spell that keeps on keeps on giving. Even if you just get two things with it over the course of time, th this is still quite a quite a nice card to play. And you can speed it up with some cards in the set too, so keep your eye out for those things. Street Wraith, a future site card. This has seen a lot of play since. Turns out free cycling is pretty powerful in decks like Dredge or Living End where you want to fill up your graveyard. Brand new art here, um, so that's something pretty pretty neat. Ooh, that's a nice reprint, Cloud Key. Yeah, this is a card that uh, hadn't been reprinted before, I believe, and um, you know is strong in a lot of different commander decks built around certain certain strategies and is a, a popular um, kind of casual combo card. So, nice to have it back here. And then the part of the pack I get the most excited for, the very end, the bonus sheet card. We got ourselves a blue card. It starts with Mole Drifter. Yes. Check out that old frame Mole Drifter. Looks like I just pulled it out fresh from a pack 20 years ago. But here it is today. Classic artwork. Oh, makes me so happy. And then at the very back, we've got our token, which is an ape token for your Pongify. For your Pongify. It's in the set. All right, let's just keep on trucking here. Sarah Avenger booster pack. Sarah Avenger was on the original Time Spiral booster pack, so it's a cool throwback there. Coal Stoker. This is a key card for Storm Strategies because it uh, itself basically only costs one mana for a 3-3. It's also just a very good card. And this card has actually been improved because you can't mana burn anymore. It used to be if you played this down, didn't have a play, you'd take three damage. Not so much these days. So, yeah, this is just an awesome card. Because if you have another spell to play, it's a one mana 3-3, three, three, which is um, totally solid. Brand new art on Logic Knot. We, we, we didn't do a ton of new artwork in this set, but we did it in a few places where it made sense. And uh, there were a few cards that we knew, knew got played in eternal formats. Um, and Logic Knot occasionally shows up in modern as a... As a Way to get a two mana counter spell into decks, and uh, yeah, we thought we'd give it some brand new artwork here. This is a uh, not in the future site frame. It's not the first time not in the future site frame. I believe it was in Modern Masters one maybe, um, but uh, yeah, first time with this with this brand new artwork on the card. Delve counter spell. One of the three delve cards. Maybe, maybe it was four, three or four delve cards that was in a future site. Feebleness we've seen and talked about already. Edge of Autumn we've seen and talked about already. Grave Scrabbler, another another future site card here. Um, this is wonky in that you have to madness it for it to, it to do anything, really. I mean, you can play it as a 4-mana 2-2. Two, two. But the delta on this card is tremendous. 4-mana 2-2, two, two, very bad. 2-mana two 2-2 two, two that grave digs you, very good. So this is the card that really only goes into a madness deck. You have to have outlets to make this card make this card worth using. Just keep that in mind. This is a card I have drafted a lot of. Um, Aaron Ephemeron is like the iconic blue suspend creature, but this card is not far behind as a very difficult to block 3-1 Shadow for 2 mana. So you suspend this thing, it comes out 2 turns later, starts attacking. Pick this thing high. This is very first pickable in this format. It dies a little easier than Aaron Ephemeron, maybe with the 1 toughness, but yeah. Um, Blue-white with cards like Infiltrator at Locor and Knight of Circe and what have you. It's one of my favorite decks to draft in this format. So really, really nice core here. 
And uh, yeah, one thing you can do is you can draft a uh, suspend heavy deck with Rift Elemental and just you know continually pump this guy up, um, churn through your suspend counters. In the original Time Spiral block, this card was not that great. Um, but this time around, it's a little better because the, the set's a little more refined. Your suspend cards are going to be stronger um, generally because you, the, there's good ones left. Um, and uh, yeah, this card is definitely a little more usable than it was the first time around. Um, and really good with stuff like the Arc Blade that we saw earlier. Absorb 1. I think this is the only card in Magic with Absorb. Good old Future Sight adding in, I don't know, 20, 30 mechanics, whatever it was. Really funny to see this back here. First time in the uh, in the normal Magic card frame and not the Future Sight frame. I'll have a video up uh, next week probably talking about uh, the frames we chose. I've gotten a lot of questions. Why not use the Future Sight and Planar Chaos frame? Um, I'm not going to get into it too deep here, but basically the short version is we explored a lot of different things with frames we could do and ultimately decided we'd make the centerpiece of the set the old card frame, the retro card frame. And then, you know, if people like the kind of frame deviation, we could go back and use the Planar Chaos and Future Sight stuff on, on, on some of their cards in the future. But um, not everyone in the building was sure that it was going to be a hit. Of course, now it is pretty clear to me that the retro card frame is a huge hit. I always had faith in it. Um, so it ma makes me very happy to see that validated. And if we want to do something with the other frames, we have access to them. A big reason why we kept with the old card frame out of all of them is you can build a deck out of the old card frame cards. A lot of legacy players, for example, have decks that are mostly old card frame or, or you know half old card frame cards where the future site and planar chaos frames you can't really, really build the deck out of. So it made sense to focus on the one that players have been looking to, to collect more of. Trespasser Ilvex, speaking of madness enablers, this is a great one, it lets you crack in for three every turn. Um, and uh, you know keep, keep your madness outlet rolling. So it feels so good when you, when you uh, get to not only attack for three, basically unblockable, but uh, man, is that a sweet card too? Outrider Encore. Yeah, the, the Encore in um, creatures from, well, let's see, that would be Tempest block? Uh, yeah, uh, originally had this damage redirection ability. So this is a uh, reference back to those um, damage redirection abilities. This is a very tricky ability to play correctly. A little bit easier now that damage doesn't stack, but still quite, quite tricky to play correctly. And this card is really, really powerful. Because basically, as long as you have any extra toughness on your creatures, this can't take damage, right? If you've got this and two and I don't know, three two twos, you can plop three damage from this, one to each of the other two twos, and they'll all stay alive. So quite a quite strong card. Also a rebel, keep that in mind. So it will um, be tutorable by Amru Scout, Blight Speaker, that kind of thing. This is a card you probably recognize, Dread Return. This card, like, you know, not single-handedly, but certainly in conjunction with a few other cards from this block, created the Dredge deck as we know it. Um, it turns out free reanimation that triggers all your Bridge from Belows is a pretty pretty big deal. So, um, yep, this is this is a powerhouse for sure. The cart, by the way, fun trivia fact, this is reanimating. The card it's reanimating is Mind Slicer. You can go and look that one up, but uh, that's what's in the artwork here. It's a little nod to that. Mind Slicer is a 2BB. Check that out. 4-3 that um, makes you disc everyone discard their hand when it dies. So, fun reference there. Henchfiend of Ukor, another Future Sight card, I believe, in the current card frame for the first ever time. This was experimenting with the alternate future of um, off-color Echo Costs. So this is a funny card in that you can slam it down even if you're not black, attack, fire breathe it a bunch and deal damage. But if you have, you have access to black, you can Echo it. I don't expect we'll ever really do this, at least not on more than a one-off card you'd find in a commander deck or something, but um, Future Sight was a hint at many possible futures, and I guess Ukor exists in one of them. I wonder, I wonder where Ukor is. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out someday. Caravac the Merciless in the uh, new Legendary frame. We've seen another version of Caravac since then um, in the recent core set 2021, but this, set, it, uh, this card was um, a limited powerhouse at the time. Very hard to beat if it got rolling. You would splash for this card, and I still highly recommend playing it if you open it up here. But in Commander, uh, I see this card rolled out in Commander every now and then, too. It is pricey to cast, but with uh, three other players in the game, it starts causing mayhem really fast, as all of your opponent's spells can be have their damage sent anywhere. So you can pick on one player and or you know kill off everyone's stuff equally, deal a bunch of damage to someone's face. Um, yeah, Caravac is nice. And for our bonus sheet card, Black, oh, Leyline of the Void. Yes. Man, the black frame is amazing. And this original artwork on Leyline fits this so well. Oh, it looks like right out of Urza block. Love it. Love it so much. Oh, and a foil, Knight of the Holy Nimbus to boot. Another rebel. 
Uh, this is a reference to the card, of course, you would all know this, because uh, I made a video about it. This is a reference to the card Clergy of the Holy Nimbus, a little common that uh, can't die unless your opponent pays two. It's a one mana, one, one. This card is a lot stronger and uh, harder to deal with. There's an imprint assembly worker token for all of those um, Urza's factories you might open up in the set. Very cool. I think this um, this artwork existed on Magic Online, but not in paper. All right, moving along here. Normally these opening videos take a take a really long time, and you know, I think the last one was like an hour and a half to two hours that I did for a booster box. So I'm trying to go a little faster than normal and still tell lots of stories along the way. So this is an interesting one in that um, Planar Chaos, I believe is the first place, besides maybe some very old card, where red got reach. This was uh, kind of an alternate idea. Could red get, get, re get reach in the alternate universe? And uh, a lot of stuff from Planar Chaos was experimental. It didn't end up sticking around, right? Um, but this is one where we actually did take this idea and have implemented it a few times, and red does occasionally get reach now, which is pretty cool. Um, this uh, so this planar chaos thing was the precursor to some cards um, as they exist as they exist today. Good work, Needle Peak Spider, setting setting the stage. Think twice. Oh man, you know what I love in Magic? Just a like slow, ponderous draw spell. Give me like a two mana upfront draw a card, three mana backside draw a card. Oh, Chef's Kiss. I love it. So it's no surprise that Think Twice is a card that I've always adored. You play it in your blue white control deck. It's over the long game. It'll draw you some cards. Because if you have two mana at the end of your opponent's turn, you just cast it for free. Three mana at the end of your opponent's turn, flash it back for basically free. It's great. It's awesome. Um, yeah, I've cast probably too many Think Twices in my life. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy to have this have this reprint here. It's, it's really iconic to the draft format to me. Homing Sliver. Yes, Homing Sliver. Out of the Future Sight frame. I think we've printed it outside of the Future Sight frame before in at least the, uh, the Sliver uh, all-foil deck that we did. Um, many years ago. But uh, yeah, this uses the mechanic Sliver Cycling, which I think only exists on this card. Uh, a hint of, of futures to come from Future Sight. And you know, being able to tutor for whatever Sliver you need is pr a pretty big deal, so this is a, a nice card to have, especially if you've got a big endgame Sliver you want to find, if you are fortunate enough to draft a Sliver Legion or something like it. Just a, uh, yeah, this is a card that you play in your Madness deck sometimes. It, this card is not like particularly stunning or anything in Limited. It's okay. Um, you know, if you're menacing away your hand, getting a 4-1 unblockable is, is nice. But, uh, yeah, one of the things about Future Sight was just, like, using a bunch of, and the whole block, frankly, in general, was just using a bunch of old mechanics, um, and this is just bringing back a random dissension mechanic to put on, put on this one card. Spinneret Sliver, giving, uh, giving your slivers the ability to block flying creatures. I believe that, uh, Reach was not keyworded in original Time Spiral. So I, th I think that came in Future Sight with Thornwield Archers. I could be wrong on this, but I think I think Thornwield Archers was the first card to have reach. Let me know in the comments down below if, uh, if that's right. But um, anyway, uh, this uh, so this is a, a correctly templated spinner at Sliver with today's wording on it. And yeah, this is a card that where, so the reach doesn't come up that often, but in a sliver deck, this will often come around late, which is really nice because it's a two mana two two, and the important part is not gaining the reach, but having a cheap sliver that will gain all of your other abilities. You know, pick up your gem hide slivers abilities, pick up uh, you know your two headed giant slivers um, or two headed slivers abilities. So yeah, this card is pretty pretty good stuff. Ridge Kusite, yes. You might be wondering, Gavin, what is a Ridge Kusite? Well, f let me tell you a funny little story because Time Spiral Block is all about the deepest cuts you can possibly imagine. This creature's ability is two mana, tap, discard a card to uh, give a creature plus one zero on first strike. Now it does that because it's a spell shaper. Spell shaper is a, is a creature type that denotes that you're allowed to discard cards to cast a previous magic spell, except for the future sight ones. The spell this is casting is Guided Strike, a white card. Okay, a little weird, planar chaos, whatever. Well, here's where I blow your mind that the name Ridged Kusite is an anagram of Guided strike. So that is the joke. That is how deep they went on some of the references for this set. So Ridge Kusite is Guided Strike. Fun fact. If you didn't know that one, uh, hopefully I taught you something new. Shade of Trocare. Yeah, this is a, this, I mentioned earlier that I love the blue-white um, suspend, like, tempo we aggro deck. Whew, Shade of Trocare is great there. One note about this suspend card that I will give is, well, I still basically take all the ones of these that I see. That they're quite nice. They do get worse in multiples, because having two Shade of Trocares in play, well, you, you know, your white mana can only go so far when you're, um, when you're pumping it. 
Still, though, we'll happily take this card. And once again, it looks so weak, right? It's a four mana, one, two, what? But uh, no, it's quite good. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a white shade, which is a thing that you will only find really here in Time Spiral Block, a, a reference of alternate futures. Reckless Worm, downshifted to common. I think it was also uh, maybe in Eternal Masters. Um, it was also uh, a common. But anyway, key card for Madness decks. Being able to Madness out at 4-4 Trample is really nice. This is a color-shifted version of Arrogant Worm. Arrogant Worm was a blue-green Madness staple. Same stats, just, uh, just green. And uh, so you can relive it here, just in red. With the Grand Coliseum in the flavor text uh, noted here, that's key for the um, Odyssey, Odyssey slash Onslaught block storyline. Seal up Primordium, so all the way back in um, Mercadian Masks block in Nemesis, we made a cycle of five seals. Um, each one could was a, basically a spell effect that sat on the table. So seal of growth, pumped a creature, seal, seal of um, unsummon, whatever it was called, um, bounce a creature back to its owner's hand, seal of fire, dealt two damage, etc. Um, there was seal of cleansing, which was the white one, which could be sacked to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Seal of primordium is the color shifted version of that because naturalized was color shifted into green. And at the time that they were, it was pretty gung ho about getting those effects over to green. Now we make, we make more in white, but um, this was originally a color shifted card. Amru Scout, there it is. I previewed this card, um, and it is a key uh, key card for the Black White Rebels deck. You're going to want to draft these if you're drafting that strategy. Do note the Kithkin here once again does not look like the Lorwyn Kithkin. This is a reference to the card Amru Kithkin, Magic's first Kithkin, which appeared all the way back in Legends. So many fun references. Lightning Axe. Now, first of all, awesome removal spell. Um, great in a Madness deck. You can get some awesome value out of this. But the thing I of course want to point to is the flavor text, which is a reference um, all the way back to when this card, uh, when this character showed up on some very early pieces of flavor text. As Moronoma Dicadasta Kuldakar. I always get that a little bit wrong. I'm sorry, Ethan Fleischer and everybody else. But uh, this is a reference to that character. And I know it's a fan favorite character by many. So As More, as I will lovingly refer to, refer to them. Um, maybe we'll see them someday. The problem is their name doesn't fit on a magic card. But... Uh, We'll see if we can find a workaround sometime. Keen Sense, originally color shifted Curiosity. This card I went over in a previous video a little bit um, is particularly funny because the story moment it depicts here is the opposite of the one depicted on Curiosity. Curiosity shows Miri following Krovax because um, they suspect, uh, Miri suspects that Krovax is up to no good. And in this alternate storyline where Miri is the one that gets cursed, as I talked about in my video um, last week, uh, it, it's the it's a flip side uh, situation where now it is Krovax uh, following Miri. But Krovax survives, unlike Miri, who Krovax kills. And uh, yeah, this is once again moving Curiosity into green, which is uh, something that, that green started picking up with Histerdon back in Onslaught. So an alternate reality card. I think this is the first time it's ever been in the, uh, the non-color shifted frame too. Wipe Away, Split Second, a mechanic that shows up in this set. I guess I opened up a card earlier and didn't, didn't talk about it. This is like when I talk about just complex mechanics. Split second, you have to know a lot to understand. You have to know what the stack is when you read a card that has split second, which is not something that we would normally do. Um, but it does create some really interesting limited gameplay scenarios where you have to might do things earlier than you might otherwise because split second is hanging around. Um, so, you know, always be wary about when to cast your, your tricks or your removal spells or, you know... Um, the, the world's never safe. Counterspells will never save you because split second, uh, split second is there. Stonewood Invocation is a classic one to me. That, that's what taught me to play my combat tricks in my main phase sometimes. So, yeah, good, uh, good stuff, white boy. Magus of the future. So there were uh, Maguses in every Time Spiral set. The first one, Time Spiral, had Maguses that were artifacts. Magus of the Scroll and Magus of the Disc and so on. The second set had ones that were um, uh, lands, mags of the, of the tabernacle, mags of the arena, and so on. And then this third set, Future Sight, had ones that were uh, enchantments. And so mags of the future is a base after Future Sight, which is maybe my favorite card of all time. So I have an extremely soft spot for this card. Absolutely love it. Recommend playing it. Super fun. And our bonus sheet card. Oh, Oh, is it what I think it is? Yes. Oh, there it is. 
the hits just keep on rolling. Legacy players unite. I started off with Trinity and Nemesis. Now I have a thought seize. Woo, baby. That is nice. Oh, it truly looks like it was meant to be in this frame. This box is off to a strong start, I gotta say. And then the, and the Kobold. Oh, that, that makes me happy enough for so many reasons. When we were pitching um, the old card frame sheet, Thoughtseize is a card that was in a lot of early discussions. And um, I'm so glad it made it all the way through. Coral Trickster. Yes. Um, here's a fun fact about Coral Trickster. So it's a morph that uh, taps or untaps something. An ability known as Twiddling. Uh, I was known that as a lot more back then, not so much now because we haven't reprinted Twiddle in years. But Twiddle is a one blue mana. Uh, instant that taps or untaps a creature. So you might be thinking, oh, this card's very clever. It casts Twiddle, it costs one mana to unmorph. That's the reference here. That is a reference here. Another reference, though, is its flavor text. They wait in darkened depths, laughing eagerly. Well, that's T-W-I-D-D-L-E. Twiddle. Fun little reference for you. Like I said, I know I know a lot of this stuff uh, from uh, just being invested in Time Spiral Blocks so deeply. So you'll, you might learn a few things going through this. Let me know down in the comments below if, uh, if you learned that one. I'd be curious to know how many of these references you get. Cole Stoker again. Hello, my old friend. Ridge Kusight, a.k.a. Guided Strike, shows up once more. Ook Tabi Drake. Yes. So Green got a bit of flying. Green, known for its horrible ability to fly. Planar Chaos throws that to the wind and says, yes, let's color pie break. Let's give Green a flyer. So uh, there's a couple cards that have higher echo costs in Planar Chaos. This and Timber Mare. Um, I think those are the, only, are the only two. Maybe there's an uncommon? I don't think so. Um, they have higher echo costs than mana costs, so you, they're a little more um, inefficient to use. But this card is, is still totally fine, right? You can jam it down when you have three mana, attack for two that turn, and the next mana you cash in your three, or next turn you cash in your three mana, and you've got a 2-1 um, flying haste you stick around with. So it's like a wind drake you just gotta pay a little bit out of order for. Um, and uh, yeah, th th this is a, a totally solid limited card. You can draft a, an aggressive green deck, so nice. There's a card called Primal Force Mage that I believe made the, the culling down and the way that Primal Force Mage works is whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it gets plus three, plus three until end of turn, which normally means nothing, but it's very good with haste creatures. This is a card you want with your Primal Force Mage. You want to play your Force Mage, jam this down, attack for five in the air. That is a good a good feeling. Sporoloth Ancient from Future Sight. So this is a card that um, makes all of your Sapperlings only have to remove, or uh, Funguses, excuse me, only have to remove two counters instead of three counters, which is the normal exchange rate for a Sapperling token. I guess technically it grants it to all of your creatures, but uh, it's really only going to be your your uh, Funguses that have that, um, that are get gathering those counters. So yeah, this is a pretty cool card, and just once again accelerates you all the faster. If you have a Spore Sower Thalid, you will make so many Sapperling tokens quickly with this, so this is a great a great draft pick. And uh, a fun future set reprint. Watcher Sliver back uh, back in the set for your Slivers deck. Once again, Naya is the colors, green, red, white, that Slivers are focused in here. And pumping up all your Slivers toughness, being a 2-4 on its own, totally fine. And keep in mind that all these Slivers affect themselves, but they are the old school Slivers, so they do affect everyone's creatures, so the Sliver Mirror Match will get uh, a little thorny, but it's Time Spiral. It's complicated. I trust you'll be fine. You're smart. You'll figure it out. Massive Ghouls. So originally... In Future Sight, um, we did five vanilla creatures that were full frame vanillas, and Massive Ghouls was one of those. But then we quickly reprinted it in 10th edition, I want to say. I have to go back and look at the core set. But um, we put it in one of the core sets in the normal frame, which was, you know, everyone joked was the actual place it was from, Future Sight, Future Sight frame, etc. Isn't that hilarious? You know, everyone made the same joke. Um, but uh, now it's back here in the normal frame as well. So where did Massive Ghouls originally show up? Who's to say? But it's a 5 mana 5 3. Infiltrator Ilkor, yep, still taking it highly and limited, very good. Yeah, this is this is this was the future site one two punch. This is what I would always like doing. Turn one suspend Knight of Cersei, turn two suspend Infiltrator Ilkor, turn four, they're both gonna come off suspend, you're gonna attack for five unblockable. That is one how you beat Sprout Swarm. I would always just draft decks that beat Sprout Swarm by the end of the format, which you don't have to worry about this time around because there is no Sprout Swarm. Um, but uh, also just a bunch of evasive creatures is very, very strong. And uh, if you don't know what to do in this format, I highly recommend blue-white or red-green because they use suspend really well, and it's very easy to snowball an advantage. And I also predict people will just not be taking suspend cards highly enough, 
even back in the old uh, days when Time Spiral came out the first time, players did not take suspend cards high enough for a long time. So, um, and, and then when we, when we brought it back in master sets, people still didn't take them highly enough. So you will first pick cards like this. They are very good. Um, so if you're drafting on Magic Online or if you're fortunate enough to draft in person with a, with a safe bubble, um, I would take these really highly. Take the ones that are past you really highly and then just crush your opponents with all your suspend stuff. Suspend is just so good. Trust me, it, it is huge. Minions Murmurs. Very nice with uh, a bunch of sapperlings if you're drafting like a green-black sapperling deck. Um, this is a card that didn't get a ton of play the first time, but I think it's a little better in this more focused draft environment and with a few more token makers that maybe found on the bonus sheet. Brian, oh my gosh, Brian Elemental, yes. This is a card I have very strong memories of. Um, there's a combo with Brian Elemental that uses it plus Vesuvian Shapeshifter. Vesuvian Shapeshifter is a morph creature that you can turn face up and it copies another morph creature, which if you copy a creature that has a uh, turn face up ability, you copy. And then every turn you can turn the Shapeshifter face down. That card's a reference to Vesuvian Doppelganger. Brian Elemental is a reference to Stasis. Um, and uh, there was a combo deck that I pioneered along with Brian David Marshall and then became very popular in Block Constructed and even showed up in Standard that utilized those two cards. So this is a very special space in my heart. I, I play this combo in one of my Commander decks to this day because it um, is such a big part of my Magic career. So really awesome to see Brian Elemental back. I bet um, now people will maybe a little bit less often have to ask me what this card does because uh, mine's in Japanese. Such good memories. The Pickles Lock, because of Brian. That's why we called it the Pickles Lock. Uh, harmonize, Harmonize, Harmonize. Yes, this is a green color-shifted Concentrate. A Planar Chaos Break, and really, you know, the some of the first green just draw spells um, that now we're trying to not do anymore, really. Um, we're trying to only let green, green draw cards. If it has creatures in play, they'll allow for it to draw cards. Um, but Harmonize is just straight-up color-shifted Concentrate, which was two blue-blue draw three cards. And, um, yeah, this was a strong standard card back in the day. Still sees a lot of Commander play now. So, quite recognizable. Jaya Ballard, Task Mage. You've seen her Planeswalker, but here she is in her, in her younger self, popping off through a time portal, I believe. And um, she has three different effects. She has Spell Shaper that casts three, one of three different effects. And the three effects are all previous Magic cards, and they are all cards which have a Jaya Ballard flavor text. That is how these cards were carefully chosen. So you've got um, here Pyroblast, and you've got Incinerate, and you've got Inferno, which are the three um, the three spells that she cast. And there's flavor text from Jaya Ballard that exists for all three of those. So that's a bit of fun trivia for you about, about this card. All right, now on to our bonus sheet card. I think it's Mystic Sanctuary. Oh, I'm just going to keep ogling over these every time I open one up. It's, oh, I just love it. And a Foil Fire Makavu. Uh, this, uh, you want to talk about Powerhouse cards. This was a card you would first pick happily. Uh, you want you want this card if you, are, uh, if you are drafting. It is so good. It is a built-in two-for-one at least because it comes in deals two, leaves deal four. Also, if you pay the Echo, it'll trade with something else probably. So that's a three-for-one. Yeah, you're going to want this card. And that's not even saying what happens if you are um, a maniacal um, villain enough to cast Momentary Blink or something like that on this. So, yeah, Fire Makavu, you're going to want it. And a little Goblin token here for Empty the Warrens. Maybe some other friends as well. All right, let's keep on digging down. Another Stuffy Doll pack. Let's take the damage and uh, see what we find. Speaking of Storm, here is a Grape Shot. This is one is a little unusual in that it uses the... Um, we, we did try, try to keep the most of the old artwork for the reprints or commission new artwork for them. This is a little weird in that it uses the uh, Modern Horizons, or not Modern Horizons, uh, excuse me, Modern Masters artwork for, uh, for Grape Shot. Um, but, you know, our art director team looked at it and really thought, yeah, let's go with this art. It's just, it's just so much stronger, um, and it still fits on the world of, of Dominaria. Great Storm card. Uh, Storm is, is easier to set up here than it might be normally because of Suspend. So a trick you will do and something you have to master in draft is uh, carefully suspending your cards to come off on the same turn and then casting a, uh, a storm spell on the turn they all come off for, you know, three, four, or five copies, depending on how many spells you can line up. So, grip shot key for that deck. It's pretty easy, by the way, to just make this two mana spread two damage. So, that's great on its own. Um, and a fine card you can play. Erratic Mutation, yes, another Planar Chaos card that can kill off creatures in blue. Quite the unusual magic card. Um, 
You never know what's going to happen with this card. It's a play on the card Erratic Explosion, which deals damage to a creature equal to what you flip off of the top. Uh, that one's a sorcery. This one is an instant. Um, you will normally kill off your opponent's creatures with it. I have certainly cast it on the, my fair share of my own creatures to try and kill my opponent or win a combat. My creature was going to die anyway. Um, it's a big risk, but this card is usually playable in your deck as a remo removal spell anyway. You're basically guaranteed to at least give something plus two, minus two with this, unless you've got a bunch of one drops, usually much more. So a nice pickup for limited and adds some variance into games <laughs> for sure. Hello, Needle Peak Spider. It's you again. Grave Scrabbler, I've seen you. Citadel Wood Readers, yes, talking about green drawing cards in Planar Chaos. This is one of those. Um, six mana, draw two cards, one four. It's got Shades of Mold Drifter. Um, and, you know, frankly, you can cast it for three mana if you have to. I really would try not to. Um, this set is often quite grindy, so you will want to kick this card. This card was a pretty high pick um, for, for green decks back in the day. So um, generally, you'll want to wait till six mana, but if you really need a blocker, you can run it out on three. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the Green Mold Drifter, you know? G gotta love it. Corpulent Corpse. You know, this is definitely on the weaker end of these Suspend cards, because it's Suspend 5, um, but still totally happy to take it and play it. Turn 6, getting a 3-3 Fear is great. Some decks really can't block it at all, so uh, definitely worse than a lot of the other Suspend cards we've seen. This is one that I think we actually probably got the numbers about right on, as opposed to, like, Aaron Ephemeron, which is a little bit too aggressive. Um, but, uh... Yeah, still would take take and happily play this. And this is a card that's value once again. It went up and up and up in Times Bar Limited originally. <laughs> you would just uh, you would just grab this and and go by the end of the format. Ivory Giant again. Spend five on this one's great though because it taps all your opponent's stuff. Strangling so okay. You want to talk first pickable cards? This was one of the defining commons of the format, um, and particularly notable because it doesn't kill Aaron Ephemeron. So there's always a bit of push and pull there. But many people said this was um, one of the most first pickable cards. Um, it, it's a double removal spell, right? It's a removal spell with a full flashback. It's an instant. Yes, it is a different color flashback. It's, a, it's an off-color flashback cost. But um, it's pretty easy to get that extra color with things like the storage lands, which, which we haven't seen any of yet, but um, work with cards like prismatic lens. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's surprisingly not that hard to, um, to make, this, make this happen for you. Sorry for the flickering there. My, uh, my extra light off the side had a had a moment, but I have since fixed it. Bewilder again. Hello. Judge Unworthy. I believe, fun fact about, the, about this Judge Unworthy, this is the first one to not have scry reminder text, which is I know, just a weird fun fact that I happen to know. I believe that's true. Uh, I think it's, it's also the first reprinting of this card. Um, once again, scry returned in future sight after a hiatus because looking into the future made a lot of sense, and it was a stepping stone to becoming evergreen eventually. This is a card which will normally destroy your opponent's creatures and gives you a bit of, uh, of card selection. So, yeah, this is a high pick and limited for sure. Oh, there's the Primal Force Mage you want to combine your Uktabi Drake with. Um, once again, normally doesn't do anything. Normally, 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. What's this weird text for? But with haste creatures is where it's at. So, playing this in like a red-green haystack, very nice. Calciderm, yes. This was a color-shifted Blastoderm. So, it might be almost preposterous to think about now, given um, the strength of creatures, but there was a time where Blastoderm was like the card. It was a defining standard card, and Blastoderm was a four mana um, shroud creature. Uh, it was a five five with uh, fading three, so it went away four turns after you cast it. Um, you would attack with your four mana five five a few times, and it would go away, and it was hard to kill because it had, had shroud on it. Um, Calciderm is a color shift version of that card. Blastoderm was from Nemesis originally. Calciderm is from um, is from uh, uh, the, the Planar Chaos. And Shroud, did Shroud exist back then? Can't remember. I, don't, I think Shroud is newer, maybe. So um, I don't know if that was actually written out. I think it might have just been written out back in back in the day. I'll, I'll have to look it up. It was right on the cusp. But um, in any case. Neither here nor there. This was a color shifted Blastoderm, which um, was a pretty pretty big deal, and this garnered a lot of talk and even saw play in a white white aggressive decks. Spell burst with brand new artwork. This is a reference to um, cards like Power Sync. Um, to um, there's a, a famous blue and an X card which counter target spell that costs X. Um, it's a reference to that card, but with buyback. So really nice. Really nice reprint here. Uh, this has seen some popper play in Tron decks over the years, too. 
Wow. Oh, let's keep on rolling. This box is fire so far with Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth reprint. This is great. I hope to uh, draft this along with Tendrils of Corruption to relive my glory days. And uh, Urborg's great. And what is our time-shifted card? So it's going to be a white card. It's going to be Palace Jailer. Now, this card is a house in Limited because Monarch snowballs so quickly. If you play this, you exile their creature, and they can't win the Monarchy back from you in a couple turns, it's just game over, right? You're going to have drawn three extra cards. It turns out when you're drawing cards, it's very easy to keep the Monarchy in one-on-one -on -one play. So, um, yeah, this is a card we... This and True Nemesis and a couple others were cards that were like, ah, should we do this in this set? Should we not? They can be very snowball -y and very strong uh, for draft. But ultimately, we knew enough Legacy players wanted them that we did it. We did it here. And, um, I, you know, unlike Trinity Nemesis, which is very uninteractable, this card isn't always good, right? Your opponent can take the monarchy from you and maybe snowball it themselves, so you got to be careful. Um, but, yeah, I love the art and the frame on this one in particular because it feels right out of, like, Homelands or something, you know, or, or the dark. Like, he's just just had been hanging out in Benalia somewhere. Love the Palace Jailer. And then a little 1-1, one -one, little 1-1 one -one Sapperling token. Very nice. All right, move over here to uh, the Sidewinder Sliver Booster. We've got Spike Tail Drakeling. This is a reference to Spike Tail Hatchling, a card from Mercadian Masks Block, which was a two mana 1 1 flyer that could counter a spell by sacrificing unless they paid one. So, this is the bigger version of that card. Very clever. Uh, this card is totally solid and limited um, as a three mana 2 2 flyer, which is normally pretty playable on its own, that can also just counter your opponent's spell. It is on board, so they'll, they'll know about it. And there's a bit of fun uh, mind games of they know you have it, do they cast their big spell, etc. But yeah, this is a great card to play. And, and I love stuff that creates that kind of mind game back and forthness. So, it's really cool. Mog War Marshal. This card uh, saw quite a bit of constructed play. And I think it still does, even in some Goblins decks, being a, um, a creature you could sacrifice to get a token back out of it. Kind of three Goblins for two mana. And in Limited, this card is totally solid. A lot of the time, you will not pay the Echo on turn three. And that's fine, right? You basically just cast Raise the Alarm where one token um, can attack right away. Uh, it blocks well, too, right? If you play it out and they have an attacker, you just block, you know, save yourself self some damage, get a, get a token out of the deal, so um, then not pay the echo next turn. So, yeah, great, great card. Thalid Germinator, there's one of our mini Thalid, um, Thalids here that uh, get spore counters and create sapperlings. Once again, a reference to the card Thalid from Fallen Empires and all those. Um, this is a simple one, right? Just a cruise tokens, and every three turns you get one. You can sack them for plus one, plus one, but having one of these on board can make combat math a nightmare for your opponents if you're playing this, this strategy, which is really centered in um, black, white, green. Mostly white, green, but you can draft a slime foot on occasion, which is a really nice uh, bonus sheet card for this deck if you get it. One of the things we tried to do with the bonus sheet was put in cards that you would see in a whole new light in this draft environment, and a slime foot is one of them for sure. Dark Withering, another very high pick, very solid removal spell. Um, six mana, instant skill for creature, a little expensive, but, you know, in a black deck, it's pretty easy to discard this um, most of the time and get that one mana instant speed removal. So, yeah, you, you want to draft this highly. Green Seeker, I previewed this card the other day. I talked about it. Um, as a, it's a spell shaper that references the lay of the land. That's the spell that it casts. Great for fixing your colors, great for activating your madness. It goes a lot well alongside Dark Withering. Um, also, I mean, I, I, one thing I do want to clarify is I talked a bit about deck thinning with this card. People, people posted in the comments, oh, deck thinning doesn't matter. And, you know, I think it's important to know, know your context, right? Deck thinning usually is not something that's relevant if you're fetching out a land and taking one land out of your deck. But the fact that with this in play, every turn you can discard a land, presumably the one that you searched up last turn, to thin a land out of your deck, does create a very real difference. And, you know, before you know it, you're six lands deep out of your deck, and that's going to just increase your draws way over, uh, way significantly over the course of the game, much differently than when you fetch up uh, a single land. So, anyway, Green Seeker, cool card, great Rebecca artwork on that one. Ah, uh, yes, Dead Gone, a split card, which appears here. Um, there's a little bit of fooling around with Red Bounce in Planar Chaos. It was just a weird thing that was being tried out with Dead Gone and Sting Scourger. Another weird thing that was being tried out were split cards where they were both the same color. They were all red for some reason. I don't know why that is. There's a vertical cycle of them, Dead Gone, Rough Tumble, and Boom Bust. So a lot of weird things happening on this card. But the idea is you kill, you can kill off a small thing or bounce a big thing. Um, and you can't save your own creatures because that's not very red. We have not done more of this. This was a, definitely a Planar Chaos, Planar Chaos only thing. But a great pick for Limited. Really high pick for Limited. Benelish Calvary, a reference to the mini 
mini knights of sets like uh, Mirage Block. Um, great white beatdown creature. If you're drafting your Ivory Giants, you're going to want this this little flanker here. Fl flanker creatures are surprisingly hard to block, so especially because keep in mind that it'll trigger um, every creature that blocks it, so they can't effectively double block this creature a lot of the time either. Wrathy Trapper again. Yep, still taking that card. Good first pick out of this pack. Refill Mental again. Hello. Storm Entity. This is a future site card that was a new take on Storm, a creature that got plus one, plus one counters, equal to the amount of other spells you cast this turn. Um, yeah, this is just a solid, uh, solid Storm card. Once again, really good with, with Suspend. Um, you know, you suspend a couple cards, go off on the same turn. You slam this down. It's a 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four haste. Um, it's not going to break anything. You know, it's no Empty the Warrens in a Storm deck, but um, it's a, just a nice pickup for that deck to grab. And this might be the first time it's in the, the current Magic card frame, not in the Future Sight card frame. So that's cool, too. A reference to a plane that I don't think we've ever seen here in the, in the flavor text. Dune Rider Outlaw. I previewed this card the other day. This is the color-shifted Whirling Dervish but also picks up being a, a rebel. Whirling Dervish was a very important card back in the day, even though it doesn't look that strong now. It was very powerful um, back when it released in Legends. And this is a reference back to that card, color shifted with a little bit of rebel bonus. Rebuff the Wicked, a white counterspell. I know we've talked about if white could do uh, some more things like this in current magic, and you'll have to wait to find out. Um, but, uh, oops, sorry, I knocked my camera there. I apologize. Um, but uh, in this format, you can definitely do this at least. And um, it is a great way to protect your creatures, right? In, 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 a lot of the cards in Planar Chaos were, hey, this color doesn't do this normally, but it's an extension of what makes Flavorful sense. And one of the things that makes Flavorful sense is what protecting its creatures. So, th so therefore, it can do this, which is very similar to giving a creature Hexproof, for example, or um, you know, preventing all damage to it for a turn. So Rebuff the Wicked, a trick you should watch out for. Jorah of the Gitu, this has been a... Commander card for a long time. Uh, this was, at one point, an extremely maligned commander uh, when your opponent would play this because they just suspend a bunch of, you know, absurd 10-mana cards and then, at the end of it, Decree of Annihilation or something. Or, you know, suspend Decree of Annihilation and then have their stuff coming off of Exile. Anyway, you don't see this one as much anymore, but it's still very powerful when it comes down. And, a, of course, a very cool story character. Love having Jorah here, the original version. All right, time shifted. We've got Land... Ancient Den? Yes, it is. Ancient Den. Artifact land. So cool to see in, in person. No filigree or anything, right? The original land frame didn't have access to that. We didn't make any new frames for this because we really wanted to tap into the nostalgia. Um, there is there is, is there Ancient Den. Get that in your Popper Affinity deck. And I got a foil back here, too, which is going to be Trespasser Ilvec. Once again, good for madness. And then another Sapperling. Getting all the right tools for our... Uh, our Thalid deck rolling here today. All right, booster pack. Let's see what we have. Primal Plasma. This is a reference. This is a um, a color-shifted, well, sort of color-shifted version. Uh, the original card wasn't a color. This is a reference to um, Primal Clay, a creature uh, that is an artifact and can enter as a 3-3, three, three, a 2-2 two, two flyer, or a 1-6 defender, all the way from, it might have been back in Alpha. If not, it was one of the very first sets, Antiquities or something like that. And this is a blue version of it. From, uh, from Planar Chaos, so fun reference to, to some old magic. Based on the flavor text here, I'm guessing Antiquities, Takasa is a character that showed up a bunch in Antiquities, but anyway, reference to the card Primal Clay, hence Primal Plasma. Empty the Oh, there it is. You know, back when Time Spiral was out, Brian David Marshall loved drafting the Storm deck. He just would force it every draft. If you know Brian, he loves stuff like Spider Spawn. He loves drafting these kinds of decks. Um... And uh, on one of his podcasts, he said once, you just got to believe it's going to be there about Storm. And uh, you just draft the deck, and you just hope you get it by the end. And you know, he would always end up with a third pack, empty the Warrens or whatever. And, uh, you know, so just if you're drafting Storm in this format, just believe, and hopefully it'll show up for you. And if not, keep again on Magic Online. But most of the time, it'll show up for you. I believe in you. Reality Acid. Okay, so this card, not that strong on its own, right? It's three mana for an enchantment. It's going to take three turns to kill off whatever it's enchanting, blah, blah, you know, it's very slow. Where this card is very strong is with the card Tolarian Sentinel, which uh, is um, a creature that allows you to return your own permanence to your, to your hand. Um, and this lets you turn Reality Acid into a repeated removal spell. So that is a very fun sideways deck you can draft. Keep an eye out for this card with Tolarian Sentinel, because it basically goes from a card that you almost never want to play to um, very, very difficult to beat. So uh, that's a card to keep an eye out for. Another Utabi Drake, hello. 
Urborg Siphon Mage, another spell shaper. This spell shaper is, ca is casting, you guessed it from the name, Siphon Soul, which is a two and a black to deal two damage to everybody else, and you gain that much life. Um, one wild thing about Time Spiral Block you might not know is that it was pushed alongside Two-Headed Giant. There was a Two-Headed Giant PTQ season and a Two-Headed Giant Pro Tour that accompanied it. Um, but the format wasn't really made for Two-Headed Giant. There were a lot of cards which, which were very strong, Urborg Siphon Mage being one of them, given that it gave you, gained you four life when it was activated and drained them for four life. Um, but the, perhaps the biggest culprits were the Storm Spells, which uh, your, your teammate could cast a bunch of spells, then you could cast a Storm Spell and do some ridiculous stuff. So it wasn't really balanced necessarily for Two-Headed Giant, um, but there were some fun moments in this card. I remember being very good in Two-Headed Giant Limited. Another Chromatic Star. Another Fortify. Hello, Fortify. Dirkwood Balath again. Good to see you. Crocodile Transmuter. Manatite. Okay. Now this is one of my favorite cards of all time. They never see it coming. The Manatite is just truly brilliant. Um, you know, it is four spike, color shifted into white. I know that there's been a lot of talk about us doing more stuff like this today, so you'll have to stay tuned for if we go down that path, but it's definitely being talked about and explored by us. Um, I love this card. I adore this card. I am personally on Team White Counter Magic. Um, I think it fits White's taxing themes, and um, it is uh, it just feels so good to get him, right? Because no one's expecting it. No one expects the Mana Tithe in Limited, and uh, don't, you just, you're going to be playing, and your opponent's going to Mana Tithe you, and you're going to like you know tap six mana against your White a de a deck opponent, slam down your cool rare, they're going to Mana Tithe you, and uh, yeah, it is, it is a beating every single time. You'll fall for it most of the time, and uh, yeah, that's life, so... Oh, it makes me so happy this is reprinted. Love, love, love the Mana Tithe. I almost put that one over in the rare piles because I love it so much. That's how much I care about it. Speaking of of, uh, of uh, cards I love, though, Slivers, Archetype I Love. This is a solid card for the red-green Sliver deck. Makes combat math really difficult, but most importantly of all, gives all of, you, of your Slivers haste. So, um, you know, letting all, your, all of your Slivers attack right away is a pretty big deal. I want to pick this card up for sure there. Quotes a Green Seeker in the flavor text. We saw Green Seekers earlier. Uh, Linwar Mentor, right, so uh, another one of the Future Sight um, spell shapers that we saw earlier. There are Linwar Elves tokens in this set, believe it or not, so um, maybe we'll crack one open, but uh, we finally made them. They've, they've never been a paper before, but here they are. Back in the day in Standard, this was a dredge enabler, right? When you were looking for green, for discard outlets, you played Green Seeker and Linwar Mentor as ways to discard your dredge cards, so that's a fun, fun little fact for you. Time Bender. This card messes with time counters, which um, is relevant for both suspend and also for vanishing. So you can put more time counters back on a vanishing card or take them off of a suspend card. This card is very versatile and as a morph creature, um, yeah, it's pretty playable on its on its front. It'll almost certainly do something in a game of limited, whether it's slowing your opponent down or um, giving you a bonus itself. Rare Collation Relic. One of my faves. This has become a commander uh, all-star mana rock. Okay, but um, in addition to that. In the format, um, in Time Spiral Block, this was such a key card. You would play this card to ramp up um, your mana. You always won Relic on turn three. It gave you a ton of mana over the course of the game. And uh, it's no surprise it went on to be strong in Commander. So um, it's got this collation artwork. Fun fact, this artwork was actually originally intended for Invasion Block, where, um, this, where the collation was formed. Um, and this symbol showed up on most of the cards with Kicker in that block. It wasn't used in Invasion, um, and it was scrapped, and the art directors were like, man, when are we ever going to find a place for this? Well, many years later, Time Sparrow came along, it was referencing old cards, and so they made a new card with that old artwork, which I think is a cool story. And our Time Shifted card is Thrabbit Inspector. I got to preview this one. Awesome one drop. This will go into cubes for sure. Love, love, love. Oh, Thrabbit Inspector. There you are. All right, and then a soldier token. A white soldier token hanging out here. All right, let's keep moving with this booster pack. Well, I hope you're enjoying all the all the stories. I have a lot to say about Time Spiral. Like I said, I absolutely adore this set. So, going for about an hour. I'll try to pick up the pace. We'll see see if I can if I can succeed. I'm usually pretty bad at it though. Seeing you, although we are starting to hit the point of uh, redundancy. So, seen a lot of these cards. Told you stories about all these Dreamscape Artist, Great Planner Chaos card. That uh, this is a, a weird take on Spell Shapers, where once again, like Ridge Kusite we saw earlier, is casting Guided Strike. This is a blue card which casts Harrow. Uh, I see this in Commander decks every now and then, so don't sleep on it. It's a way for your blue deck to repeatedly ramp. You can, you know, cast 
um, Harrow over and over again. Fixes your colors and your mana. Um, so, yes, solid card for uh, for Commander. Don't sleep on this one. And Unlimited, totally fine. Uh, a great way in particular to uh, cast your Madness spells. Um, you got to have enough mana for it because you will not get the lands in time to cast your Madness spell, sadly. Um, but provided that you have the mana, you can use this as a Madness outlet, which is nice. Spell Shapers pull some considerable work in, uh, in the set. Fortify, keep moving. Orcish Cannonade has new artwork. That was one where the art where the art director was just like, eh, you know, if you're going to include this card, we really want to have new artwork for it. So it's one of the exceptions we made. Um, this is a reference to, of course, Orcish Artillery, which is a creature that costs one red red and has the ability to tap to deal, deal two damage to any target and three damage to you. Uh, this is a instant version of that with draw a card attached, which is which is pretty cool. Reference to a famous old famous old orcs there. Another Dirkwood Balath. Here's Rough Tumble, the red card in that vertical cycle of split cards I mentioned earlier. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. It's being a little wonky. There we go. Um, it's either Pyroclasm to non-flyers or, I don't know, Skyclasm, whatever you want to call it, to creatures with flying. This is exploring uh, the red space of dealing damage only to flyers, which we've seen a few times before. Cards like Thunderbolt and such. Normally green does this these days. Um, but yeah, this is, once again, a weird double-colored split card where uh, they're both the same color. I still don't know why they're all red. I don't know why all three cards in this cycle are red, but anyway, there you go. Poultice Sliver. Hello, Regenerate. You don't see that these days. Um, but there's a few Regenerate cards in this set. This lets your slivers be defensive, which is really nice. Um, if uh, you need to just stall to find the right sliver to pump everybody up. So you're not normally going to be, um, you know super craving this card because it isn't good on offense as much um but it's a fine card and you know you can tap this to regenerate your other attacking sliver so it's, it's totally solid um it, it can be can be be good um but it's not like the highest pick of a sliver for the deck still a fine card uh Meyer boa this is a reference to river boa which was uh, the same card but had island walk and that was a very big card back in the mirage era Island walking over your opponent's cards and, um, um, you know, regenerating so it can't die. Meyer Boa is, uh, is the version of that that can uh, hit swamps, so that's cool. Rada, heir to Keld, this is an important story character. Holding that dude's head just off frame. The original, um, the original full artwork, I think you see more of his body, but, uh, yeah, we just wanted, we just wanted the head on there. Um... This is a very unusual card in that you have to use the mana when it attacks during that very split second. So it's great with activated abilities. It's great with uh, instants you have lying around. You don't take mana burn anymore, so that's nice. And this is the precursor to the Rada that you saw in um, Dominaria. So that's pretty cool. All right. Our bonus sheet card, Vanquisher's Banner. You could draft a sideways tribal deck, or might I just recommend uh, naming Fungus, for example, or Sapperling. One thing we did try to, to do... Um, with the set, once again, with the bonus sheet cards, is put in cards that would add new texture to the draft format, let you do things you could never do before. And um, it creates a lot of replayability, and this is a card that you might draft a tribal deck you never could draft in normal time spiral that is held together a bit with Vanquisher's Banner. Or you might notice that you have a bunch of warriors in your deck or something at random. So this is a cool card, and the artifact frame is just so amazing. Um, I love seeing these artifacts. Makes me really happy. All right, and then we've got... A foil Riftwing Cloudscape. Yes. This is a card that is a reference to the card Cloudscape from Nemesis, which is just a fading creature that flies. Um, this is a awesome suspend card. There was always a debate about this versus Aaron Ephemeron. Um, usually people settle on Ephemeron, although you could go either way. But the tempo swing of this was huge, and being able to just cast it easier for five mana was huge. Um, the... Um, the thing that you should know about this card that isn't immediately obvious is it can bounce lands. So the tempo swing here is that you not only can return their creature, but if they don't have a creature you want to bounce or no creature at all, you can always bounce their land, which will just set them back a turn, which can be can be a pretty big deal in the format. And then we've got a giant token here for a Pact of the Titan. All right, let's keep on digging. All right, coming up hot, we have Mogwar Marshall again. Seeing you... There's the Tolarian Sentinel. This is the card that you want to combo with your Reality Acid. The card this casts is Rescue, a single blue mana to return a permanent you control to your hand. 
and this is a card, once again, it's it's okay on its own, where you can save a creature that's dying to a removal spell in combat, you can save something, but damage doesn't go on, it doesn't go on the stack anymore, so it's a little bit worse. Um, but with Reality Acid, that is that is the combo. If you can get Tolarian Sentinel of Reality Acid, you're going to be in really, really good shape. Another Sentinel Wood Readers, another Corpse. Virulent Sliver, Poisonous, one of the two cards, I think, with Poisonous. Snake Cult Initiation is the other one. This is an alternate way to win with your slivers. I remember I got to do one triple future sight draft once where I just drafted like eight of these or something and easily won the draft. Um, and in the Two-Headed Giant Pro Tour, it was this card that won the draft um, as well as Chris Lockman and Jacob Van Lunen just forced this strategy every single time and uh, kind of broke a limited format Pro Tour, which is not something that really happened. Um, this card is, yeah, it's a totally solid sliver. comes down for one mana. So it gets your sliver, uh, an early sliver on the board. And then, can let you alternate win with that Poisonous, so keep that in mind. You want to draft a lot of these to really go down the Poisonous strategy, so you won't be able to do that that often, but when it does, it's really good. And then, yeah, just as a one-mana sliver for your Naya Sliver deck, totally fine. Gives you an alt route to victory. This card, though, is a card you will always want for your sliver deck. It's a, a sh color-shifted version of Muscle Sliver in white, pumping up all of your slivers. Two mana, two, two on its own. Remember, they apply to themselves. Um, that uh, glorious anthem your slivers. Yeah, this is this is the card you want in slivers, absolutely. And the thing about this card is you want to pick it highly because people who are not heavy slivers decks will just take this sometimes. You know, it's a two mana, two, two. They might pump up a creature or two in their deck. So yeah, grab this if you're drafting slivers. It's really nice. And, and conversely, it's really easy to um, get this to just pump up a creature or two in your own deck. So... Don't be afraid to grab this if you're even if you're not heavy slivers. Although it will pump up your opponent's slivers, so uh, be warned. We've got Penumbra Spider. So in Apocalypse, there was this cycle of cards. Um, there was Penumbra Bobcat, Penumbra Worm, and one more. It's not coming to me right now. But anyway, these were creatures that when they died, you created a token that was a black version of them, kind of like they left a shadow copy of themselves behind. Uh, Penumbra Spider is a, another version of that. Um, it is a reference to, the, to that in Time Spiral Block, and it is very good. This is a card you want to draft big time if you are drafting this set. Um, four mana, two, four flying reach is already pretty solid on its own, right? You'll play a giant spider sometimes, but dying into another copy of itself is excellent. Um, and this will shut down a lot of flyers in the air. It'll really gum up, gum up the ground, and, uh, you know, your opponent has to spend two cards to kill kill it. So this is one that, uh, in the playtest play for uh, Time Spiral Remastered, I got to mana tithe a number spider, and that felt awesome because that was like the most efficient way to deal with this card. Normally, it is very hard to deal with a, a number spider, so take it often um, and enjoy your number creature. Got another judge unworthy here. Skipping past you, strangling soot again. Sudden death, great name for a card. Really love this name for a card. Wild artwork, artwork too. Um, and this uh, is a split second card you got to watch out for. You know, if you have a combat trick, you might be ruined by a sudden death. So. Keep that in mind with this card. This is one of the first split-second cards I think that was shown to kind of show off like why it is so important that you um, that you know about this, this mechanic being in the format, right? It really can warp warp a game uh, if you think your opponent might have a, the ability to do something that you can't respond to. Whip Spine Drake, nice little morph creature. Um, this one showed up in Future Sight with the off-color morph flip cost, but this is one you're happy to play. Like I said, I always like to draft the Blue-White Skies deck. This is another card that is great in that deck. But you can also just play it in your blue deck as a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer. Nothing wrong with that. And it's easy to splash a color with cards like Prismatic Lens and get that into your deck anyway. So, fine card. We've got Fungal Reach. So speaking of cards that make it easy to splash, these storage lands are deceiving. Um, they're usually pretty playable, even if they're just in one of, of your colors, um, because you'll have some extra mana lying around. You can store counters up on them. And they'll give you a two or even three mana boost sometimes in the late game. I'm not saying pick them super highly or anything, um, but they're fine when they lap around to you. They're totally solid to, to play. And then uh, they help you splash colors really easily, right, to get that one white mana you need or something like that. So if you're drafting on Magic Online, don't be afraid to grab these. They're big uh, big constructed players too, but... Ah, oh, Safi, Eric's daughter. This makes me so happy. Ryan Panikos has been messaging me, asking when this is going to show up, and it is in this set. This has brand new artwork of Safi. Um, and the cool part about this is this artwork is a companion to Ryan's 
Hans Ericsson that showed up in Commander Legends. So we commissioned it around the same time. The sets didn't come out around the same time. Uh, we had this cool Safi lying around. And uh, we thought, hey, this is a great chance to update Safi Eric's daughter with the um, the Commander, not the, well, not Commander Legends art, but the, um, the art that ties back into Commander Legends, Hans Ericsson. So really, really cool. Happy to have the Safi here. Great work out to Ryan, and I'm glad this piece is finally realized. So really nice. And a, a cool legend to boot, right? That sees some play. It saw play an infinite combo in Standard back in the day called Project X, but I see this card in Commander still a decent amount of the time. So, neat card. We've got Cranial Plating. You might have seen this on the uh, list for Call Time as a little sneak preview of Time Spiral Remastered. Um, and once again, an artifact that just looks glorious in the frame. Uh, when we got our first test back of of artifacts in the old frame. The feedback on them was so good that I worked with Ben Hayes to get more artifacts into the set because everyone just loved, loved, loved the artifacts. And, and I do too. I mean, they just look, look incredible. Yeah, this is a card for your affinity deck for sure. Then we have a foil, ivory giant. Draft this one, tap your opponent's stuff. And a little 6-1 insect token right here. Rawr. Get in there, 6-1 insect. You go. All right. Keep moving with this booster pack right here. While we are at an hour fifteen, this is going to be a it's going to be a long one. Everybody, buckle on in. Uh, going through cards that we know though, so it'll go a little bit faster. I don't know if we're at the halfway point yet, but Death's Spore Thalid is here. This is a black card for your Thalid deck. If you draft green black Thalids, you can uh, get this guy. This one is definitely one of the stronger ones uh, because it can be a removal spell and really mess with combat and comes down early at only two mana. So especially if you are able to create a bunch of extra spore counters, this is the card you want to um, have around if you have spores or a thousand stuff because you'll start just crushing your opponent's board. Really nice card. That's spore thalid. Thornwheel the Archer. There it is. This was the first Death Touch and the first Reach card, I think. It was at least the first, de first Death Touch card premiered here before showing up in Lorwyn. It was originally in the Future Sight card frame Normal card frame to normal card frame here. Um, but yeah, this little little simple common was a pretty uh, pretty important one for uh, Magic History. Should have brought it in some brand new mechanics. Mana Tithe again. Yes, Mana Tithe, everybody. Tendrils of Corruption. Blade of the Sixth Pride was formerly in the Future Sight card frame. We did talk about using that frame again, but once, like I said, the decision was made. Everything should be in the modern frame. That's what Remastered means. We'll put, except for the thing we want to focus on with the unique frame. The old card frame. So, got new artwork for this for this one. Blade of the Sixth Pride. And there it is. Finally, Aaron Ephemeron shows up here. This is such a defining card of the format. I got to preview it and talk a bit about it last week. But, um, yeah, this card just is... It's time spiral to me. Like, you suspend Aaron Ephemeron turn two. That is the clock you know you'll have to race against. Um, if you've never played with this set, draft it highly, first pick it. Uh, it is it is huge. Uh, it, it really should be uncommon normally, but Ben Hayes was like, it's such an iconic part of Time Spiral. Let's put, um, let's make sure that it's common in this set. So pick it highly. You want it in your deck. First pick it. That's all you need to know. Spore Sower Thalid. Very nice. Again, for our Sapperling deck. Cloud Seeder. Another one of those. Lost Aura Mancers. Another one of those. Get into our rare. We've got Reiterate. This was a card I know a lot of people have asked for for a while. Um, and uh, is finally back here. It is very easy, by the way, to go infinite with this card. Um, this plus early harvest and nine mana, for example, can go infinite very easily. Um, but but uh, yeah, this is a card that is sweet and commander. Can copy your opponent's spells, come back to your hand. So great card to have have back here. No, it's a reference to the Mirari. So you can see that in the flavor text. But the Mirari was an artifact that could copy spells. Um, and this is a. Well, you know, reiterating what the Murray was doing. So that's pretty cool. Bonus sheet card, Become Immense. All you Infect players, grab this. Pump up your Glistener Elf, the new new old card frame uh, size. And then we have our token, a spider token. 2-4, reach to go with the Penumbra Spider. I don't know how many packs we have left. Let's see, we have one, two, three. Wow, I don't think we've been halfway through the box yet. Holy smokes. Well, we'll just keep on going. I'm always amazed by how many people want to watch the whole video. So if, you, if you're going to stick around, if you stuck around this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I do, the fact you want to spend an hour plus with me is really means something. So thank you. 
I have put a lot of work into the set, and I hope you're enjoying it. Dream Stalker. So this also combos with Reality Acid and anything that has an ETB effect, right? So it's good with Fire Maw Kavu, good with resetting your Vanishing cards. This is a card that definitely has um, value, which is not immediately obvious in the draft format. It is worth noting that it is mandatory. You do have to pick up a permanent. So don't just jam this on turn two. You're going to have to return a land if you do that. You don't want that to happen. But uh, in a very synergistic deck, this can be quite good. Riddle of Lightning. Uh, also the first time without reminder text on this card, I believe. Um, you know, uh, really good with... It's going to sound obvious. Really good with high mana cost cards. Um, <laughs> but most of the time, just a strong limited remo removal spell. Um I, in Constructed, I always tried to make a deck with this wouldn't, you know, the 10 plus mana cost cards work. Um, didn't really. <laughs> um, but yeah, in Limited, you just jam this down and um, kill off a creature, get some scrying in. Very nice. Another uh, Spike Tail Drakelings, can pass you, another Siphon Mage. Kavu Primark. One thing that was big in Future Sight was mashing up two mechanics that wouldn't normally go together. Kicker plus Convoke works. Um, you can tap your creatures to pay for the kicker cost. So someone thought that was very clever. They put that in here. Not unlike how you could tap the creatures to pay for the buyback cost on Sprout Swarm, uh, which is not here, once again. Um, but yeah, this is a totally solid 4-mana 3-3 that you can, can convoke pretty easily. Maybe get it down on turn 3 if you have a 2-drop. Or long game, you can make a 8 out of this. So this is a, a, a very solid card. It looks a little unassuming, but because you can convoke it with your creatures uh, to pay for its kicker cost, it comes out of... Um, I guess it's a 7-7, seven, seven, not an 8-8. Eight, eight. comes out as a 7-7 seven, seven, a lot easier than you might expect. So uh, pick this card up. Mind Stab. Now here's a suspend card that is very hit or miss. This is a card which is excellent if you suspend it on the first turn and gets quite bad if you cannot suspend it on the first turn. So this is one that you will not always play. You'll play it sometimes for sure. Um, and redundant copies definitely get a lot worse. The, the reference here is a reference to the card Mind Stab Thrall which um, can make your opponent discard cards. So that's why you got this wonky... Oops, it's unfocusing again. So we got this wonky Thrall coming in through this time portal here. This, was, by the way, was a little art motif that was used on, on the suspend cards. This little blue... blue blueberry. See it on my Ancestral Vision... Oops. See it on my Ancestral Vision playmat down here um, as well. But uh, it shows them basically coming through time, which was the idea of, of suspend for the most part. So um, here's Mind Stab Thrall coming at you through time. Amber Scout again... Dead gone again. Here's that prismatic lens I mentioned before. Great mana rock. This sees some play in commander even. And uh, this will let you fix to whatever color you need. So it becomes very easy to splash anything if you can grab a couple copies of this. So definitely try and grab them if you can. Um, I always like playing two mana mana rocks in basically any limited format. So this is great on its own. But then the filtering part just lets you splash stuff super easily, which is especially relevant with off color flashback costs, off color morph costs, and so on. So grab this. Grab this one. Bound in Silence. This is a weird Future Sight Rebel Aura, so your Amru Scout can now get Pacifism rolling on things. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what's going on here. Otherwise, just a card you'll grab in limited. Three mana, Pacifism effect. Totally solid. It does have everyone's favorite Tribal. Um, this was, I think, the first Tribal card. Uh, there might be another one in this set, but anyway, it's one of the first tribal cards because the mechanic debuted in the following set, Lorwyn. Uh, or at least came out in full force in the following set, Lorwyn. So for a brief period of time, you could use this to pump your Tarmogoyf and nothing else, uh, but then we, we started doing a lot more of it with the, the next set. And tribal has been with us ever since. Premature Burial. So there was a cycle of cards in, um, in Time Spiral, um, one for each set that was a one and a black to kill off a creature in a different way. So Premature Burial was the one from Time Spiral, and it kills a creature that came into play last turn. There's a card called Cradle to Grave in Planar Chaos, which kills off a creature that entered the battlefield this turn, and there's a, cr a card in the third set, which I am blinking on the name of, but anyway, it's an enchantment that kills off the next creature your opponent plays. So fun little vertical cycle for you. Um, like, like, like I said, this is the time spiral one, and one of the stronger ones because you don't have to worry about leaving mana up for it. It doesn't let your opponent mess with it like um, uh, the one in the last set. I think Grave Peril is the one in Future Sight, maybe. Um, uh, like, you know, your, your opponent can see that one coming. This one is just a removal spell you keep in your hand. Your opponent plays a creature you don't like. You pay two mana, you kill it on your next turn. So, pretty cool removal spell here. 
Which are burial. Stormfront Riders. Um, this plays with the gating mechanic. So gating was something that showed up in Plane Shift um, originally, where you would have to return a creature of the same color to your hand. This doesn't have the same color restriction, but does require you to return two creatures instead of one. And um, one thing about this card in particular is you can play it in kind of two ways. You can either play it honestly, you know, slam it down for five mana, pick up two other creatures, make two tokens, get a 4-3 flyer. That's nice. Or you can just leave it in your hand and slowly grind out tokens over the course of the game by um, casting it and returning itself along with one other creature to make two tokens. So if you're in a long game situation and you just need to keep grinding out tokens, this can do that for you. You know, do not um, underestimate how in a long game this card can just totally take over the game, especially when you can start casting it twice a turn. So definitely an interesting choice when you're drafting or, and playing as to if you should um, have it be the its own 4-3 creature or if you should um, uh, you know, keep making tokens with it. Utopia Micon. This is a, a fun little card. This card um, has seen play in a number of, of goofy little combo decks by letting you sacrificing sapperlings for one mana. But in general, this is just a one drop you can play in the uh, in the Thalid deck. It's not that strong in limited, um, but if you're really heavy Thalids, it's a, it's a card you can jam for sure. Glittering Wish. This was the one wish in the block. This was a reference to the wish cycle from Judgment. And let's get multicolored cards. I have always loved this card. I love uh, I love wishes. I'm a huge fan of wishes. And uh, getting multicolored cards is pretty cool. Um, it allows for you to have some really interesting wish boards. And this has created all kinds of fun decks, or uh, like Swans of Bryn Argol based combo and, and so on. So really cool reprint. And then our bonus sheet card is going to be Quizali Pride Mage. Hey, there's a gold card right next to each other. That's a funny, funny pairing right there. Uh, really cool reprint on the bonus sheet. This was a, a staple in Zoo decks for a long time. She's a little bit less play now. Um, but still, it's a great way to uh, have a flexibility to destroy an artifact or enchantment if you need to, while also um, you know being an efficient creature. And we've got an assembly worker hanging out right here. All right, time to take a sip of water. Woo. We've been going through these. Still, I think, at least half the box to go. I have not been keeping count. Uh, Drifter Ildal, um, one blue for a 2-1 shadow that you have to pay an upkeep of, uh, every turn for. In original Time Spiral block, this card was actually not that good. Um, I know it looks strong as a 1-mana two, 2-1, two but locking up your mana every single turn really put you behind. This time around, this card is a little bit better. You can draft the more cohesive blue aggro deck. I still would not jam this down on the first turn, because you're going to fall under that uh, being a turn behind quickly, but playing this with the spare mana on turn 3 or turn 4 is a lot more plausible in, uh, in Time Spar Remastered. So, cool card. Needle, Needle Peak Spider. Yep, skipping past these ones we've seen before. I've seen a lot of the commons by this point. Um, Molten Slag Keep. Just another storage land here. One, you know, does what the storage lands do. There's one for every allied color combination. Riptide Pilfer. Yep, this is a card from Planar Chaos. This is a color-shifted copy of the card Headhunter from Onslaught Block, which was uh, a, bl a black version of this effect. Blue got to play around, around with some discard in Planar Chaos, so that's where this card came from. Uh, it feels brutal when you get, you get hit by this because you don't want to start going down on cards, and especially if you can keep tempo, like balance your opponent's blockers, stuff like that, um, this can start to snowball really quickly. So I actually love this card quite a bit. And I often just like playing it on turn two and not morphing it, you know, just jam it turn two, especially if you're on the play, attack, you will likely get a card or maybe even two out of your opponent's hand. So it's a nice one. Oops. Skip there. Harmonic Sliver, great sliver um, that uh, blows up artifacts or enchantments. Keep in mind that it is mandatory, so you will be forced to blow up your own artifacts or enchantments, so be careful when you play this one. But um, yeah, this is, a, I know, seen a lot of commander play. Harmonic Sliver has. Rare. Pact of the Titan. Um, the packs were a thing in future sites that uh, you could pay mana the next turn, pay it in the future. Sometimes in these decks, though, uh, there is no future turn because of something like Hive Mind or a, another combo kill, so you never have to pay at all, which is always a bit of a funny side effect of these cards. But yeah, this one gets played in the um, in the Hive Mind decks that have existed in the past for sure. Note the color indicator right there. That's something we didn't have in future sight that just shows that uh, this card is red. And then our bonus sheet card is going to be SRAM. Nice. I made SRAM. And I think now I'm going to have to finally build a SRAM commander deck that have this old card frame version. We put a lot of legends on the bonus sheet because we knew that for commander players, that would be quite popular. So 
All right, going down, going down, on to the night next back. All right, if you have made it this far, and uh, I appreciate it, by the way. Thank you so much. I think we're probably about at about the halfway point. Now things are going to start getting faster that we've gone through a bunch of the cards in this set. If you've made it, made it this far, uh, please post in the comment below with the code word, which is orange. I don't know why I like doing fruit for these. I just love doing fruits. Post orange in the comments below if you made it this far. I'm just curious how many of you have made it. I love, I love, uh, I love knowing. So secret code orange. Post in the comments down below. All right, Bone Splitter Sliver. This is a reference to the card Bone Splitter from Mirrodin, um, which was an equipment that gave a creature plus two plus so. Well, hey, this sliver gives your creatures plus two plus so. Reference to Bone Splitter. There you go. I think it's even shaped like uh, like the card Bone Splitter right up there. A little bit. Uh, Piracy Charm. Yeah. So Piracy Charm was a color shifted version of the card Funeral Charm, which is not in the set because it was on the original bonus sheet, but. Um, yeah, this card is pretty funny. Um, it's a blue card that both can make a creature lose a toughness or make someone discard a card. So it is extremely not blue. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely an example of what was being played around with in, uh, in Planar Chaos. A, a pretty wonky card, all things said. Um, this is a, a, I find this to be a great sideboard card. I often don't main deck this, but it's a totally solid sideboard card. If your opponent has a lot of one toughness creatures or you need to trade up or your opponent is going to be holding a bomb or something in their hand. You want to make him discard, so. And, uh, yeah, there's, this cycle has not been completed. Maybe for Mystery Booster 2, I should make uh, more cards in the color-shifted uh, color shifted, um, charm cycle. Of course, there was um, there were other charms in the set, right? There's Evolution Charm, there's Dawn Charm. Those charms all exist. That cycle's completed. But Piracy Charm was the only one of those charms which was straight color-shifted from, uh, from another card. Copy Primark again, Mind Stab again, Bound in Silence again, Icker Slick. This is a card that I think was made because the designer was like, look how clever I am. And you see the thing here is it's got cycling, but it also has madness. So when you cycle it, you can madness it, which is what you're going to want to do most of the time. Because when you cycle and madness it, it becomes six mana to give, it, give a creature minus three, minus three, and draw a card. You can play, you can of course play it on its front side, three mana, kills off a creature, good on its own. But the six mana draw card version is definitely the version I love to cast as often as possible. Um, and this format's a little bit slower, so you often get to, get to do things like that. Really high pick card, Acre Slick. It's a really good black removal spell. You want this if you can find it. Castle Raptors. This is a reference to the card Castle, which gives your untapped creatures plus zero, plus two. It's an old, old enchantment. Um, Castle Raptors, totally solid flyer as a 3-5 blocker and a 3-3 three, three attacker. Fathom Seer. Now this is a card that brings back many good memories. You would play this in that Pickles Lock deck I was mentioning earlier with Vesuvian Shapeshifter and Brine Elemental. Um, and uh, this is referencing Gush. So Gush was an a instant that made you return two islands to your hand and let you draw two cards. Uh, that's what this card is playing off of. Now it might seem like bouncing two lands to your hand is very bad, right? It really puts you behind on tempo. But don't let, let that fool you. This card is quite good. You just morph it. You wait till you were going to miss a land drop anyway. You return two lands. You play a land back out. It's really, really nice. This card is quite strong and a, and a high limited pick. Uh, a lot of strong memories about from about this card. And yeah, Gush is a powerful magic card, so it's a good reference there. The set which began Terramorphic Expanse. Before there was Evolving Wilds, there was Terramorphic Expanse. This is the set that kicked it all off right here. So great re to have. Helps you splash your colors too, which is nice. Stone Cloaker. So here is another white gating card. Um, this one has flash, so it lets you pick up your creature at instant speed to save them, which is very nice and feels very white. But one unusual thing about this card, you get this interesting interplay. Of when it comes into play, you exile a card from their graveyard and it bounces a creature back to your hand. So if you want and you just have three mana, you can cast it to exile a card from their graveyard and you just pick it back up yourself. But whether or not um, you want to showcase your opponent that you have it, whether or not your opponent has relevant cards in their graveyard. There's a bit of choosing you have to do with this card. Um, and um, the mind games of your opponent knowing you can have it uh, in your hand can be really nice too. So anyway, this is a great card though. As a three mana, three, two flyer, um, you can you know reset it, enters the battlefield, a, a creature or something like that with. Play with Fire Makabu. Play everything though with Fire Makabu. <laughs> it's really good. Skittering Monstrosity. So in Urza block, there was a cycle of skittering creatures that were all a little overstatted, but sacrifice when you did something. Skittering Scourge, um, for example. Um, this is a, another one in that line. 
I'll note that the uh, size is off. The other ones had more power um, than toughness, but uh, you know, not every reference can be 100% perfect. And um, this is uh, still a pretty good reference to those old skittering creatures from, uh, from Urzablock. Clockwork Hydra, so in the olden days of magic, there were these clockwork creatures, like um, like uh, Clockwork Avian and um, Clockwork Beast, I believe, that uh, got counters and then would remove the counters as they attacked or blocked. Um, we did more of them in Mirrodin with um, a flyer and Clockwork Beetle and, and so on and so forth. Um, this is Time Spiral's take on this. There's only one of them in the set, and it's this guy right here. And it's pretty nice in that when it removes its counter by attacking or blocking, you get to ping something, and it grows over time. So this is a card that I'm actually usually pretty happy to play because um, it just you know it helps you get bigger and bigger with time, keeps your board presence out, and lets you ping stuff. So yeah, I, I dig uh, dig the Clockwork Hydra. Here's our rare Heartwood Storyteller, another green card that lets you draw some cards. Um, it's a very friendly card in Commander, so if you're feeling uh, particularly friendly, this is a good card to put into your deck. This card was a huge point of discussion when the set first released. Um, didn't end up, end up seeing a ton of play in the end, but, uh, you know, still still saw some, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice card. Alright, moving on to our bonus sheet card. We have Lingering Souls. Very nice. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, looking card in the old card frame. I know there was some discussion about the artwork that we chose. Um, you know, the art we talked about it for a while, and the art director settled on this one. I think it's still a great piece of artwork, and this is a, a definitely a staple in a lot of formats. So, really happy to have that here. And then we get a foil, which is Orcish Cannonade. There it is, back again. Very nice. Thank you, uh, the Orcish Cannonade. Alrighty, and there's Metallic Sliver. Let's move on to the next pack here. <clears throat> All right, moving on to this pack. Here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, couple of halberdier again. Skipping past you. Logic not again. Battering sliver. Big red sliver gives everybody trample, which is very nice. Um, this one was not super strong the first time around. But you'll play it sometimes, right? It's a big sliver. There aren't a lot of just naturally huge slivers. So it's a good curve topper. Nice to gem hide sliver into if you're accelerating your slivers out. Um, Edge of Autumn. Feebleness. Yep, skip past these. Might of Old Crosa. So this is a card which has gone on to uh, show up quite a bit in Infect in particular as a single mana for plus four, plus four on an Infect creature. The, uh, the reference here is uh, on Giant Growth, the original uh, Giant Growth, or uh, there's a there's a mouse um, that um, is shown to be getting very big. Well, this is that maybe that same mouse getting even bigger with the Might of Old Crosa. So really cool card, uh, gr great reference back to the past. Thick Skinned Goblin, <laughs> what a, what a weird card this is, giving your um, giving your echo cost zero mana to play and becoming protection from red. Um, but hey, you know, it's a, it gets the job done. This is a reference to, I believe, Keeper of Kukis, um, if I remember correctly on this card. Um, this is the kind of thing where you mostly play it for the two one that can get protection from red, and then every now and then if your deck is echo heavy, you can use this, this to skip out on, on an echo cost. So lets you play a Henshfin of Ukor in a mono red or a not, not black deck, which is pretty pretty funny. But yeah, this card is a great card to pick up, especially if you um, want to sideboard it, at the very least, against other red opponents. Another Storage Land and Salt Crested Step. Crovax, Ascendant Hero. So I talked the other day about uh, the color-shifted Crovax here, about Crovax's storyline, how, how sad all that is. Um, but uh, here, here he is right here. This is a huge limited bomb, which is partially why it's mythic. Um, it is... Very, very, very powerful. It's basically unkillable unless you have a split second card. You gotta sudden death this guy. And it'll pump up your creatures and shrink your opponents. So, um, yeah. This is a very strong card. A reference back to Ascendant Evan Car. And then Banishing Light as our, uh, as our bonus sheet card. Very cool. And uh, Goblin hang out here. We tried to pick some cards that were standard legal um, so that you could play with them in standard. And this is one of our rules at that, which I, I approve of. I think that's a really neat, neat idea and neat goal to... Um, have some that are open standard. 
All right. Speaking of uh, Red Bounce on Dead Gone earlier, here's the other one, Sting Scourger. This has even seen some legacy play, I know, to bounce uh, huge things back into players' hands. It's great to show and tell this out, for example, and bounce their Emrakul or, or what have you. Um, Red Bounce, you know, not so much of a thing these days, but this is a, a quite a nice card in Limited. Um, so definitely pick it if you can. You know, Unsummon with a creature attached is a Man of War, and those, those get played. The Echo's a little steep, but, um, you know, I still don't mind paying it next turn and keeping my free 2-2 two -two a lot of the time. So, very nice. There's a, a trope in Magic of these illusions that uh, when they become targeted, they go away. Gossamer Phantasm is one of them. This is a color-shifted version of Skulking Ghost. That is a black card. This is a blue card. A lot of people read these kinds of cards, and they're like, oh, man, no, I don't want to play this. It's going to die really, really easily. Well, it can sometimes, right, especially if your opponent has an ability that taps it to target. But a lot of the time, things that target will just kill off the creature anyway. So I actually like these cards quite a bit. And as a two-mana, two-one flyer, um, you know, if your opponent is spending a pump spell to kill it off, you still one for one of them. So it's really only bad against activated abilities on the board. Um, so I like playing this card quite a bit. And you can sideboard it out if it's bad against your opponent's deck. But, um, yeah, this is a solid limited card. Note the flavor text reference to Hakeem Loreweaver. That's a name you don't uh, don't see every day. Very old legend. There's this guy again. He's going past the cards we've seen. Seen tons of these. Haze of Rage. Yeah, here's a wild storm card you can play. This is a good follow-up to your Empty the Warrens, but you could also play this and say your um, uh, your Thalid deck, right? We're making a bunch of Sapperlings if you're red-green. Great card for that deck. The buyback storm combination is really funny because, of course, you... Uh, will, will count itself if you bought it back. So a common play with this card is cast it with buyback once and then cast it without buyback the second time to give all of your creatures plus three plus oh uh, in, in total. Plus, if you had something unsuspend, you're making them much larger than that. So pretty cool card um, and doing some really wacky future site teaming up of mechanics. Um, that, that's fun. Big Game Hunter, yes, love this card. This card is awesome. I love stuff that uh, is a creature that comes into play and kills something else off. Big Game Hunter does that in spades. It's fun to say. This is, works on two axes, though. It's Madness, so it's great to discard, grab for your Madness deck. But also, once again, it is a Rebel, so you can tutor it up to kill off your opponent's big creature in a pinch. Really good to have one of these in your Amru Scout toolbox. Really, really good. Uh, there's the Cloudscape. We talked about that one already. Walk the Aeons. I tried building so many bad combo decks with this card. I remember I had a Dreamscape Artist Walk the Aeons combo deck that uh, was trying to get a bunch of islands, and then you would take a bunch of turns and keep using your Dreamscape Artist. It didn't work. Anyway, uh, nice extra turn effect here. And if in Limited, this card is pretty strong because you can usually take one extra turn uh, with this um, or without too much trouble. You'll hit six mana. And then it's pretty easy to buy back this one time. So it's without too much difficulty, you can make this two extra turns in your limited deck. So um, a card you'll want to pick up uh, if you're drafting. And then bonus sheet card, we've got Stonehorn Dignitary. Popper All-Star. This guy right here shutting down your opponent's combat steps. Should see some playing commander too, you know, just make sure you don't get attacked, which is nice. All right. Moggy, I've seen you. Here's a, here's a Thalid I love, the Thalid Shell Dweller. This is one I take very highly. First of all, it is a 2-mana 0-5, which it's pretty hard to chew through a 0-5. So getting it down on, on turn 2 will prevent a ton of damage to you. This card is huge. And then every 3 turns, it's going to make you a 1-1, one, one, which um, just, just adds up over time, right? This both blocks damage on its own, plus gives you tokens. And um, then if you can accelerate it with a Sporso or Thalid or something like that, it gets all the better. So this is a great card to pick up in green. I play this even if I'm not playing any kind of, of Sapperling deck, but if you are, it, it just gets all the better. So, yeah, awesome card. Um, zero 5 Defender is usually not my definition of, like, a card I get stoked about, but this is a zero 5 Defender I do get really excited about. So, Deep Cavern Imp, nice future site card with a, a, a potential future of what an Echo Mechanic could be of discarding a card instead. Uh, I think this card is great because you, in a Madness deck, it just does exactly what you want, right? You discard at the beginning of your turn, all your mana is untapped, and you can Madness out whatever it is you're trying to do. If you're not playing Madness, I would not recommend playing this because you're just, um, you know, going down a card. Um, but if you are, re really great, really great card as a 2-2 Flying Haste that then lets you give a discount on a spell fundamentally next turn. 
Utopia Vow is a funny green removal spell. It's a pacifism style card that uh, lets them ramp with their creature. Usually the ramp, not a big deal. You're not going to cast your pacifism until mid late game anyway. So this is just a great green pacifism to pick up and definitely one of the odd pauls that Planar Chaos provided to us. Um, this is a reference to the card Utopia Tree, by the way. A 2-mana 0-3 that taps make a mana of any color. Well, that's what the Utopia Tree uh, Vow does. It turns you into a Utopia Tree. Lymph Sliver. Yep, yeah, seen you. Gath and Raiders. This card is a defining card of the format, and it is back here in Time Spiral Remastered. The reason why this card is so defining is... Um, you can unmorph it for free. So whenever your opponent has a morph creature, you have to be thinking about, could they just discard a card and turn it face up right away, right? So in combat, any morph could be a 3-3, three, three, and you always have to be prepared for it. And there's this mini mental game of, is it a Gath and Raiders? And that's before you even consider if they're going to be down at zero cards after they discard, and they have a sudden 5-5. Five, five. Um, do not skip over this card in your pack when you're looking through it because it is red if you are not red. You should play this card basically 100% of the time, and in whatever colors you're in. You morph it, you have a surprise 3-3, this card is great. Play it, play it, play it. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you other than this is a regular first pick in Future Sight. So, um, yeah, really strong. And of course, it gets even better in a Madness deck, because it's a free discard outlet. It just lets you Madness right away um, whenever you, you want, without any other um, notions. And your opponent doesn't even know you have a discard outlet on the board necessarily. So, yeah, Gath and Raiders is huge. You want this card in limited. It's so good. Another Psychotic Episode. Pallid Mycoderm. These are one of the white uh, white Thalid cards. These showed up mostly in Planar Chaos. And uh, this is a big one for the Sapperling deck, right? It kind of spans... The deck kind of spans between green, white, and black. This is a big one that it turns all of your uh, Sapperlings into mini... Uh, uh, glorious charges for your team. So, um, if you can grab one of these for that deck, it's nice to have one or two lying around, um, just so you can overrun your opponents in the long game if the board gets stalled up. Shivan Meteor. Poor, I was thinking about this poor little guy right here, taking 13 damage. Oof. I previewed this card the other day and talked about it a little bit, but, um, you know, one of the challenges with this card is it reads very close to a black card. It's basically five mana, kill off a creature. So we try not to do things like that, um, these days. All reprint set, though, uh, a fine place to put it. And there's always this fun mini game of suspending it two turns early and just seeing what's around when it lands. And um, I guess finally, if you can draft this with Stuffy Doll, that is a, that is a good time. Core Dirge. This is a color-shifted version of the card Core Chant, which is a white card. Um, and uh, this is a you know from an alternate timeline, I suppose, on uh, on Wrath. Very strong limited card. It will save your creature and kill off one of theirs. So for a three-mana trick, this card is quite good. Uh, it's, it's got some w weird text on it. You know, it's kind of uh, a complex complex card. A lot of players skip over this one, but this is, was a very high pick in, uh, in Limited. Do recommend. Cryptic Analid making its uh, thrilling return. I think last time it was in, like, a dual deck, Venser dual deck or something. Anyway, this is a funny card in that it scries one, then scries two, then scries three from Future Sight. Uh, the amount of card selection here is tremendous, actually. And you would pick this at a reasonable clip, given that you can see up to six cards with Cryptic Analid. So you can really find whatever your best card in your deck is, um, or get six cards closer to it, at least. So, yeah, this is a, a really nice pickup, and a pretty pretty funny magic card. Nether Trader. His uh, mini infinite combos can happen with this card. Um, a reference to the card Nether Spirit, which uh, could come back from your graveyard. Uh, it's an old card that could come back from your graveyard. It's really good if you have any Sacrifice Outlet, though. So if you have a way to sack creatures, that's what you want, want to be doing with this. And then for a bonus sheet card, we have Reclamation Sage, which looks super at home in that old frame. Very nice. And then another Sapperling. All right. 36 packs is so many packs, everybody. So many packs to be going through and talking about. Um, Pit Keeper. Okay, this is a, uh, a fun card in that we still reference this card today in game design. Why is that? What's the Pit Keeper deal? Well, the problem with Pit Keeper and what we'll learn from this card is that the right thing to do with Pit Keeper a lot of the time is just cast at turn two, right? It has this game text that only, only triggers if you have four more creatures in your graveyard. It's a reference to the card Oversold Cemetery, which is an enchantment that does uh, basically this game text every turn. Um, but the right thing to do with this card a lot of the time is just cast at turn two to get a two drop out on the board. 
However, um, when we watched people play with the card, pe people always felt like they needed to wait to get their effect. And a lot of newer players, or even mid-experienced players, would be like, I want to get my trigger. I'm not just going to waste this on playing it as a 2-mana two 2-1. Two so we learned a very important lesson uh, from this card in particular about how people will try and do what the cards tell for them to do. If you put bonus text on a card, um, especially a cheap, a cheap mana cost card that's going to make people play wrong, think very carefully about that because it's, you know, they're not going to want to not get value out of their card. Players love getting value out of casting their spells. So, um, yeah, this card was pretty, pretty defining in terms of a game design theory for Magic. It's a great article by like Jake Tice, I think you wrote about that. Anyway, Pit Keeper is there. I'm going to keep scrolling past these. Jorah's Time Bug, a reference, of course, to Jorah herself. Um, and uh, this is a way to manage your suspended cards. This card is not that strong, um, but, you know, if you're really suspend heavy deck, you could consider playing with it. I would generally not play this, though, um, but it is a fun throwback. Sunlance. Uh, this is a color-shifted version of the card Strafe. Try out what if white had some selected um, removal that dealt damage. Um, to not white creatures, because often white is like, hey, we're great, uh, you're not, we deal damage to th stuff that's not white. Um, this is not something that really stuck in white's color pie, it was not one of the planar cast experiments that worked out, um, but it is a very notable card as one mana deal three in white. Paradise Plume. Um, this is uh, a big mana rock. Um, don't usually like playing this card, admittedly, in limited, um, but the reference here is to, to the Lucky Charm, so that's like um, all the cards that gain you a life when you cast a spell of, 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 a, of a specific color. Throne of Bone um, is one of them. Ivory Cup is another one of them. Um, you have to pay one on those, but you don't have to do that here. And uh, this one lets you choose which one that you want, which is nice. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice design, right? There's a lot of stuff about this design that I like, um, but the card is not that powerful. You can play it sometimes if you need to, though. Um, I've played this card for mana fixing before, so. Char Rumbler, oh, this is a wild, wild magic card. Uh, the minus one power three, something that truly is out of future sight. Uh, you gotta pump two mana into this before it does anything, but the double striker uh, can get pretty out of control pretty fast. It's gonna hit for a lot of damage in a red deck, so. Um, really, this card is like just hilarious to me, and it's funny that, you know, we're printing this card again in the year 2021. Um, but uh, yeah, good old, good old Char Rumbler. Yavmaya Dryad, this card is very clever. This is clearly like a card that uh, it's very designer. It's like, check out this funny thing I can do, where it is forest walking and give either player a forest. Normally, of course, you're just going to play your three mana 2-1 and give you a forest. Um, but if your opponent's not playing green and it's a the late game, you might give them a forest. And um, yeah, this card is is uh, pretty solid as a three mana ramp spell. So you want to grab this one limited. Amazing art by, by Rebecca. Hopefully you're all enjoying this talk about, about Limited. Um, I just feel like it's tips that might be useful if you draft a set on, once again, Magic Online or something else. I know the format pretty well, but it's a fun thing to talk about. All right, Wheel of Fate. As I mentioned in my video uh, last week, there's a cycle of these, each one referencing an old card. This is Wheel of Fortune. You can go check out that video uh, where I talk about rejected flavor text for Wheel of Fate, which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, this card has not seen as much play as some of the other ones. Um, but still, the, the threat of Wheel of Fate is pretty nice. Um, uh, you have the ability to refill your hand in red. The, uh, there's a, a mystery booster. This card is in there. And one of my favorite combos to draft is this plus approach of the second sun. It's very nice because you approach and then you draw seven cards with your Wheel of Fate. Pretty cool. Dovin's Veto. Oh, that looks amazing. I feel like I, I say that every time I see these, these old frames. But yeah, that's awesome. Love the Dovin's Veto there. Cards he's played in quite a number of formats now. And then, oh, oh my gosh, what do we have? Uh, we have Foil Old Frame Mystic Confluence. There it is, our first Foil Old Frame card. Oh, that's so awesome. People have been asking about what the Foil looks like on these. Here you go. I have not even seen one of these in the final version, the final, final version in person yet. That is so awesome. It's got the shooting star and everything. This is the first one I've opened up, opened up and it feels so cool. Oh, this takes me back to cracking open invasion boosters when I started playing Magic. I, I just love this. 
so very much. Yeah, I feel like I'm looking at the one ring or something because I, I just keep flipping it back and forth. I got to get not lost in this one card. We got a lot more packs to get through, but that is so cool. That is going to go right into a cube. Or maybe a commander deck. I don't know where it's going to go. It's going to go somewhere. I'll, put, I'll post a video of that up on Twitter, too, because I'm sure everyone will want to see it. All right, continuing onward. Still have a lot of packs to go through. Holy smokes. All right. Snapback. This is a um, an awesome free spell. Exiling a blue card from your hand to pay, pay the spell's mana cost. Uh, you always have to be wary of snapback. Do not get blown out by a snapback in this limited format. It is common. It will show up. It is a free spell your opponent can cast while they are tapped out. So um, watch out for snapback. Yeah, I guess that's what I got to say on that. Two-headed two -headed sliver. Uh, mind stab. Going through the ones we've already talked about. Imperiosaur, right? This card showed up originally in Future Sight, 4-mana, 5-5 five, five, Dino. In Limited, it's basically just a 4-mana, 5-5, five, five because you will usually have basic lands unless you have, like, um, a stray uh, storage land stor floating around. Maybe cut those from your deck if you're playing this. Um, but, yeah, this is a great card for Limited, 4-mana, 5-5. Five, five. Super happy to play this card. Faceless Devourer is a shadow creature that loves eating up your opponent's shadow creatures. This is a card I would often play as just a three-mana, two-power shadow card. Um, you know, its shadow is really hard to block. A lot of times your opponent will not have a shadow creature. But when you do get to eat up their shadow card, it is all the more delightful. Um, that is a huge, huge swing. So, yeah, I would take this card and play this card pretty often in Limited. This is a reference to the Nightmares from Torment. So in Torment, there was a cycle of Nightmare creatures, um, like Faceless Butcher and... Um, and uh, Laquatus' champion. And when they came into play, did something, and then when they left the battlefield, um, they got the thing back. Nowadays, that's white, right? Nowadays, that is Banishing Light that's doing this. But originally, it was black, and uh, Faceless Devourer is a reference back to those black cards. Oops. Uh, Return to Dust. It's become a commander staple over the years. This was a, um, a cycle, one of these in every color, where if you cast it during your main phase, you got uh, to do two of something, and um, yeah, otherwise, you just got to do one of something, or in the case of this one. Other, other cards are like Careful Consideration, which is um, drawing you four cards and then discarding two cards versus drawing four and discarding three if you cast it at, at instant speed. Might of Old Crosa is another is the green one. But anyway, this is a, uh, the white one, and it's a pretty commandery staple at this point. Four mana to get rid of two artifacts or enchantments. We've got Sedge Sliver here. Who, uh, this is a, a reference to Sedge Troll. Sedge Troll is a troll that has black to regenerate. So this is a sliver that makes all of your slivers into Sedge Troll, which is pretty funny to me. Great Richard Kane Ferguson art on, uh, on this one. Love that. Uh, time shifted card. We have Paradoxal Outcome. This is a card we put there for the vintage players in the house. Uh, that's who this card is for. So um, you can return a lot of moxes and stuff like that to your hand, a lot of zero mana cost artifacts, draw a bunch of cards. Uh, this card is played in vintage, so really happy to, to have that here. And then, uh, oh, we've got a foil life and limb. So there's a foil rare for you there. This card is a wonky one for sure. Um, is, I mentioned in my video, preview video earlier that uh, judges are not always the biggest fan of this card. It creates a lot of very strange rulings. You can go um, read all about what Blood Moon and Life and Limb do together if you'd like to. And then, ooh, this is cool. Here is the bat token from Sengir Nosferatu. This has never existed in paper. Um, and, uh, here it is, finally, after all these years, a little bit of bat action. Cool, well, there's that, that token. Let's keep on moving. Another pack to go through here. 36 boosters is so many boosters, but I'm so glad I get to do this. I love seeing all these cards. The old card frame cards just constantly make my heart, heart a flutter. Um, all right, empty the Warrens. Reality Acid, yep, seen all you, seen all you. Here's a new one, Errant Doomsayers. It's a Rebel. This is a card that I usually would not play unless I'm a Rebel deck. Like, tapping a small creature, it, it, this tapers off pretty quickly. But, of course, if, if I'm Rebels, I'll play at least one of these to tutor up with my Amru Scout um, in Limited. So keep, keep an eye out for that. Um... Riftbolt. Now, here is a classic. This card has shown up in all manner of formats since. Mono Red Burn loves this card. Um, this is an awesome removal spell. Three mana for three damage. That's ace. The suspend one is interesting because you, you let your opponent know it's coming, 
uh, in exchange for a huge uh, huge mana discount. So don't suspend this turn one or anything. That's not when you want to do it. Um, but on a few, what you will normally do with this card, the way the spend is normally used, is you will suspend this the turn before you want to storm. And what will happen is, if you're planning on storming next turn, um, you'll suspend this, and then maybe you have other suspended cards. This comes off suspend, you cast it on something, and it ups your storm by one. So this is always a good removal spell, but is especially good for a storm deck. So keep an eye out um, for these. You'll want to pick it really highly anyway, and especially high if you're trying to empty your opponents. Amru Seekers I did a preview video on. It is another Kithkin and a Rebel. You'll tutor this one up with the Amru Scout quite often. Here's Gemhide Sliver. This is a key card, key, 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 key card for uh, Sliver's decks as a way to fix all your colors to cast your wonky Slivers that are on an off color, as well as um, just accelerate you. That acceleration is really important um, to be able to fill up the board. Lightning Axe, seen you, Keen Sense, seen you. Seen all you. Ooh, nice. Venser, Shaper, Savant shows up here. Um, this is a uh, important story character. Seen a lot of play over the years. A nice legendary creature showing up with a legendary crown. And uh, yeah, really happy to have it have it in my in my box. And old card frame. This is, by the way, um, bounces a spell or permanent, which is the first time that ha this, that was a thing you could do was bounce a spell. Um, you saw Reman kind of do it before, but, um, you know, this was the first time it was really written out like this. So, pretty iconic card. And it doesn't counter the spell, by the way, so it can deal with uncounterable spells, which is very unusual. I have played this card a lot with a Riptide Laboratory over the years. Anyway, bonus sheet card. Cray Merchant. Hey, Gary. What's up? You're going to make that, that uh, two-headed giant format even uh, even more tricky to navigate with this in, this around. If anyone, anyone decides to play that. But yeah, this was a, a slam dunk common. I mean, everyone loves Gary, so... All right, keeping moving. Seeing all these. Brute Force, this was color-shifted giant growth. It's like, hey, what about a world where red gets combat tricks like giant growth? And uh, thus, Brute Force was made. All right, skipping past the stuff we've seen. Oh, where are I going? Oh, here's one, White Mane Lion. So um, I talked about this card on Weekly MTG a couple weeks ago now, but um, this is the common gating creature uh, for white. And uh, this is huge, right? It's a great way to protect your um, your own creatures in combat or um, or trigger, trigger enters the battlefield effects. Um, you can either bounce one of them that has enters the battlefield effect and use it again. That's nice. Or one thing you should know is you can just pick it self back up and just keep recasting it, um, which is especially relevant with Storm. Um, this card can just be two mana, add one to your Storm count. So keep that in mind as you're drafting the set. That if you have a bunch of mana, you can just filter into white main line before you cast your Empty the Warrens or something like that. Means Murmurs, Brian Elemental, Harmonize again. Fungus Sliver. Here is a sliver um, based on the card Fungusaur. Fungusaur is an ancient card that uh, basically does this whenever it takes damage. It gets a counter. Um, people loved it. They loved playing Prodigal Sorcerer in it, stuff like that back in the day. So we made a sliver based on that. The flavor text, in fact, the, the last part of the flavor text, thereby ensuring their rapid growth, is the last line of flavor text as well on Fungusaur. So, um, really a throwback. It's even a fungus sliver to that card. So, thanks, Fungusaur. Uh, Talrand is our old card frame here. Very cool. And we have an insect token, another 6-1 another insect for uh, all you 6-1 insect lovers. All right, next pack here. All right, two-headed sliver, suck my mirror. Here's the Blight Speaker. This card is key for the Black-White Rebels deck. Um, you can either just ping them for one every turn, so it's basically unblockable, which is nice. Um, it's a way to close, but you can also just pay four mana and tutor up a cheap Rebel. Um, this does find Rebels that cost um, less mana, uh, sorry, that cost one more mana than it. Um, it doesn't go up two mana, though, so it's one less mana than Amru, Amru Scout, which is worth noting. Um, but what you often want to do with Blight Speaker is find additional copies of itself, because then in the long game, you can just keep tapping it and um, making them lose life, right? So it's pretty easy to start assembling two, three damage to turn off all of your Blight Speakers. So really important card. It's a reprint from Planar Chaos for uh, for the strategy. All right. Um, we have Ancient Grudge. No, uh, no Avacyn's Caller flavor text here. This is the original set it appeared in from... Uh, Time Spiral. 
Camry Seekers, you know, all you. Looter Ilkor. Okay, this is another very high pick blue card. Blue, as you are, might be starting to figure out, is a very good color in this draft format. This is a Merfolk Looter, which is already a card that you would pick extremely highly. It also just attacks for one every turn. So there's a lot to like about Looter Ilkor, and um, I love this card. It's so much fun to play um, because I love looting and, you know, drawing... Um, drawing card and discarding card is great, and um, the shadow lets you just ping through turn after turn after turn for damage, just adds up over time. So, really great card. Highly recommend drafting this super highly. Not over Aaron Ephemeron. Ephemeron is what you pick above Looter. That's my strong stance, um, but Looter is a great one. Then the Holy Nimbus again. We got Smallpox. Um, this is a card which I know a lot of folks have tried building around over the years. It is very brutal when your opponent plays a uh, mana creature and you small pox them. This is play in all kinds of rack decks, for example, and is, of course, a reference to the card pox, which um, this is, a, a, appropriately enough, a small version of pox. I guess that makes sense for the name. Large pox, of course, you can find in Mystery Boosters. Mystical Teachings. This was a key card to the draft for, or to the constructed format. It's solid in draft, but in constructed, this was, like, the card, right? There is entire decks based around this and toolbox engines. Um, so this is a lot of players, one of their favorite cards from the block. And I'm so glad it's in here and uh, you can kind of build with it and play with it again. Finding flash creatures is very relevant, especially if you open up to fairy because you can find to fairy and then all your creatures have flash, which is great. But just going to find a removal spell and then flashing it back to find another removal spell or something in limited is still, still quite good. So awesome card to have around. Aeon Chronicler, this was a card that I love. I actually played this in Commander. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play this in Commander, but um, I, it was big back in Time Spiral, and it's one of my favorite cards from that, that block, so um, I play it because, because I enjoy it so much. What you will often do with this is suspend it for one, just to get basically draw a card and then have a huge um, attacking Morrow next turn. But don't be afraid to also suspend it for, like, five, whatever you have the mana for, and just get a free personal Howling Mine, or not free, but, you know. You put mana into it initially, but then a uh, uh, Howling Mine for several turns. This card is great. Highly, highly recommend picking this one highly. Um, which I guess is a lot of uses of highly, but that's how I feel about this card. Anger of the Gods. And then Foil Extirpates. Ooh, that's cool. Second Extirpate of the box. Love that foil job. It's got a great foiling treatment up there. And yeah, this still sees, uh, sees some sideboard play, so that's a nice nice one to pick up. And then there is your Cloud Sprite token for um, the uh, Cloud Seeker that we saw earlier. Cloud Cedar, I guess, not Cloud Seeker. All right, keeping rolling here. Let's go into this pack. All right, Piracy Charm, Battering Sliver, Evolution Charm. I don't think we've talked about this one yet. This is another card in the five card charm cycle that appears in Planar Chaos. Every color gets to, to do, or every charm does three things. Um, the first thing is the thing that the color naturally always gets to do. The second thing is a little more tertiary. In this case, returning a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And the third one is something very unusual. And uh, green granting flying is definitely unusual. So that's what's going on here and the structure for all of those charms. Um, Pretty wonky card. I still see people play this in Commander today as a, a, a versatile card, though. So Charms uh, tend to see a lot of play. That's a nice one. Here is Gorgon Recluse. I've been waiting for this one to show up. This, this is such a key Madness card. You will want this for your Madness deck if you're drafting um, like red-black or black-green Madness. As a 2-mana two 2-4 two uh, off of Madness, it's nice, but especially the fact that it kills whatever it blocks uh, as a Gorgon um, thanks to its ability is really, really great because you, you can madness at instant speed. So they attack with the creature, you flash this out, you block, you kill whatever you block. Um, this is a, a card which is a, a cornerstone for um, madness decks in this format. You'll want these if you're drafting that deck. And as a five mana two four, it's serviceable, but really you want it if you're, if you're deep on madness. White main lion, children of Corliss. This has um, maybe the wild first two words of a magic card, uh, which are sacrifice children. Um, but uh, this is a card that is very fun to play with. It makes you lose a lot of life. I know folks have played this with Ad Nauseam over the years, stuff like that. Here it's a rebel, so you can tutor it up with your Amru Scout or Blight Speaker and gain a bunch of life back. I would not normally play this card, I think. It's pretty weak. Um, you can play it if you, really, if you really need to. 
It was, it, playing an extra rebel in your rebel deck just as an initial target is never never that rough though. So it's a fun card to play if if you ha- have some rebel searchers but not a lot of things to go find. Um, more trespassing, momentary blink. There it is, a fan favorite card. I love momentary blink. I'm a huge fan of this card. Very happy it's got uh, returned back here with original art, original feel to the card. Um, and I've already listed numerous things this combos with. So. Yeah, great card to pick up. Even just playing it on its white side, right, uh, without having blue mana is great. But if you can flash it back, that's really where it shines. And even though your opponent knows that you have it, it's so hard to play around. Um, this card is just, yeah, super great. Want a Maul Drifter momentary blink in this format, please. Sun Death, yep, Whip Spine Drake, yep, Fungal Reaches again. Porphyry Nodes, um, fun fact about this card. So this is a color-shifted drop of honey. Um... And the uh, if you an- anagram the name, I believe it anagrams to Honey Drops, um, which is a very deep reference, given that it's, um, it is not just anagramming the drop of honey, but it's literally Honey Drops, which is uh, only part of, of that card. So uh, I play this card a lot in Constructed. It's a, it's a one-man way to keep your opponent's creatures down um, and in check. Yeah, it doesn't see a lot of play these days, um, but, you know, a lot of folks like Drop of Honey, and this is just a white version of it, so very cool. Or mostly, mostly a white version of it. Contagion Clasp is our time-shifted card. This, by the way, really fun. Uh, I mentioned earlier how cards here can be used in ways you might have never used them before on the bonus sheet. This is great with uh, Sapperlings, because you can up all of their um, fungus counters. So keep that uh, synergy in mind with Contagion Clasp. That's a great thing for it to up. Oh, and there it is. There's your Lenore Elves token. I know a lot of folks have been asking about this. There it is. Okay. Um, let's go through this pack here. All right. Grape Shot, Erratic Mutation, Evolution Charm. How many more comments haven't we seen? We're still finding them. Here's Nantuko Shaman. It is a big set, I suppose. Here's Nantuko Shaman, which... Um, you will almost always want to suspend because when you unsuspend it, you will draw a card for doing so off of that uh, off of that ability because you'll control no tapped lands at the beginning of your turn. Um, three mana, three two. You can play if you need to if you just need a creature on the board to block, but you really want to try and suspend this one if you can, especially given it can um, attack right away off of the uh, off of the unsuspend. And Tuco are an insect race that showed up in Odyssey block, um, and I think maybe Onslaught as well. Um, so uh, that's what this is a reference to. Um, and you still see them every now and then. You know, Nantuko Husk and Nantuko Shader are popular cards that show up every every now and again. Giant Dusk Wasp. This is a common that uh, is nowhere in Ephemeron, but it's still quite good. It is, you know, one smaller than the Ephemeron. But um, I would still take it and play it. And it is a lot easier to cast than the Ephemeron, being at five mana instead of uh, seven. So this is another card that I first picked many a time. Grab your Giant Dusk Wasp or I will draft them from you. Sidewinder Sliver, nice one mana sliver. It's not the strongest or anything, but if you're drafting an aggressive sliver deck, this is a great card to have around. Orgish Cannonade again, Psychotic Episode, Premature Burial. See all these. Ooh, speaking of sliver decks, Hive Stone, great sliver enabler here. Makes all your creatures slivers. So if you're worried about stuff not matching, don't worry about it. Just play Hive Stone. Um, this is a card you can you can definitely slam in to uh, a, most of your sliver draft decks, given that you're probably gonna have some non-slivers in them. Um, and then, of course, in Constructed, I know a lot of folks play this in their Commander decks and so on. So, great reprint. Leveler, there it is. Old card frame Leveler. Um, this is kind of the meme card of, of the set. But it's not entirely um, without merit because Laboratory Maniac is on the bonus sheet. So, if you, um, if you get exactly the right cards together, you can play that. Which, by the way, doesn't mean you'll necessarily win. But it has a 100% game end rate because you cast it, it, Maniac on turn 3, you cast Leveler on turn 5, and uh, you exile your library. If they kill your Maniac, you lose. If they don't, you win. So someone's winning the game. It might not be you. And then for our foil, which I can feel is in the back of the pack, we've got Infiltrator Ilkor. Another one of those guys. All right. Next pack here. Whew. All right, I'm counting, I think there's like 10 or 12 more packs left in the box, maybe. So we're about two-thirds of the way through. All right, Brute Force we've seen. Veiling Oddity, I previewed this card the other day. Um, still don't know what this is a reference to, by the way. I think this is maybe a Time Spiral card without a reference, which is, is a rarity. 
Um, this it's no Aaron Ephemeron, but it is definitely a card that I would I will still take and happily play. Um, so once again, suspend is, is so much more powerful than it reads. You should be taking cards like this, and putting them into your decks. Um, otherwise, once again, I'll draft them from you. That's my big big tip. Poor Simeon Spirit Guide got axed from Modern just before the set came out. I am glad we banned it before the set hit, though, just because it would be a big feel-bad if players tried to acquire these, and then we had to ban the card. I always prefer to ban before the set comes out where we can. So, has brand new cool artwork, though. So, legacy players who enjoy the Spirit Guide, feel free to jam it uh, in those decks. Maybe it'll show up in a cube here or there. Yeah. Anyway, this is a reference, of course, to Elvish Spirit Guide, which is the green version of this card um, from Ice Age. Antico Shaman, Cutthroat Old Doll, Seen All You, Seen All You. Dormant Sliver. Okay. This is one of my favorites. And even though slivers aren't really in blue, I we put it in, you know, Ben put it in. I, and I think I even suggested that this needed to be in here because it is such an iconic one. All of your slivers have Defender. They cannot attack anymore. But all of your, of your slivers can trip. This card is a blast. And you have to figure out how, um, how you're going to kill this off eventually after you've drawn a bunch of cards. So this is a great, great, great um, build around. Um, it makes a very different kind of slivers deck than an aggressive sliver deck, and I love this. It's also, by the way, a card you can sometimes sideboard in if your opponent is playing slivers, uh, because it shuts all of their slivers down from attacking you. So keep that in mind, although, although they will be cantripping and drawing a lot of cards. Love a dormant sliver. It was played in uh, even uh, a block deck, too, that was a blast. Conflagrate, combo kill enders, uh, a, a combo kill card right here. Uh, numerous cards, numerous decks rather, that have let you draw a ton of cards, like Swans of Bryn Argol, will try and kill with Conflagrate at the end of it because you'll have a bunch of cards in your hand. So this is a fine way to deal 20 damage in one go if your hand is extremely full, but in limited, you're just going to use it to you know deal a few damage here and there. And it's pretty good, right? I mean... Um, getting a double removal spell can be really powerful in the long game. It is no fireball, right? It does have that XX in the mana cost, but it's still quite good, and um, I would take it middle of the pack probably in, in limited. Urza's Factory. Uh, I, I love this card. Um, it is a land type Urza's, which to me is the ultimate of decadence um, because you can tap all three of your Urza Tron to make seven mana to activate your Urza's Factory. Land type Urza's has no other relevance on this card, which is why I think it is just so extraordinarily decadent. Um, this was a huge block constructed card back in the day. Swarm Yard, regenerate your rats. I know I have a year of the rat deck that this goes in, and it's great, but also fits with all these other creature types. Keep an eye out for them. There are cards like Penumbra Spider, which this regenerates, and, I mean, provided that you are playing at least one target for it, it's probably worth drafting and putting in your main deck, frankly, a lot of the time, um, because the opportunity cost is pretty low, of causing you mana trouble, and being able to regenerate a creature for free is, is gigantic. And then our bonus sheet card, Atali. Nice. This is a huge, huge um, commander card, right? There are a lot of people who play Atali commander decks, but also it's just it's a strong magic card. So this is a card which um, will you'll draft happily in play. Note the Elder on that, so getting a, an Elder Dino into here. Not just Elder Dragons, but Elder, Elder Dino show up here is, is very nice. Oh, here's a unique token. This is the token companion to Riftmarked Knight, which makes this wild protection from white haste flanking token. So that's pretty cool. Okay, next pack. Here we go. See what goodies we find. I'm going to actually just take this moment to move this, this stack out of the way. I know some folks mentioned before that having this huge stack of cards makes them a little nervous, so let's just get that out of here. Let's fly that out. I keep my stack of, of sweet rares, though, hanging out. And here we go. Next pack. All right, we have Tolarian Sentinel, seen you, seen you. Sangrophage, this is a callback to the card Carnophage, which is one black for a 2-2 version of this card that makes you pay one life instead of two life. Um, this card is not often a card you will play. Um, it reads very appealing, but it's very quick, quickly can becomes bad for you, um, we found. Um, but there are really aggressive black decks that will play this card, so I'm not saying don't ever play this, because there are some decks where it's right to play this card. Um, it, I love decks, I love cards like this, which you will not always play, or you won't even play a lot of the time, but when it's right to play them, uh, you can build some pretty cool decks, so keep an eye out for those in limited. 
Thrill the Hunt again, Still Primordium. Yeah, seen all these. Avon Rift Watcher. Okay, so Avon Rift Watcher is a, um, a very fun one in that uh, it comes out, you know, starts it starts attacking, gains you some life in the process. But momentary blinking this is kind of the thing to thing to do. Um, you want to blink this card because it resets its vanishing and it gains you four life in the process. So in blue white, which is once again an archetype I recommend a lot, you can blink this to keep a, keep your flyer around and just gain a ton of life in the process. Um, it's also a rebel, so you can tutor this up by the way which is a pretty big deal with your Amory Scout. So lots of just Rebels hanging out. Black-White Rebels, a uh, good deck to draft as well. Or even in Blue-White, I will play my Amory Scouts normally. I'll have enough to go get. So Amory Watcher is there. Kroos and Grip. This card has become a uh, commander staple for sure as a way to kill for artifact or enchantment that cannot be responded to. So, um... You know, your opponent might have all the mana available to activate whatever ability on the artifact they have. They might have Staff of Domination ready to go. Doesn't matter. This just cuts it right out. So um, this is where it all, all started at. It's a cool card. Bonded Fetch showing up in the non-Future Sight frame. The idea here was, what if we had a creature with a tap ability that with haste? So um, that's a wild futuristic thing we could do that we don't normally do, and giving blue a haste creature looks, looks kind of weird. In reality, this is just like a good looter. And um, you should play this card most of the time. Looters are very powerful. So, um, love Bonded Fetch. Calform Pools, the Blue White Storage Land. Woo hoo! A Chroma's Memorial. That is nice. Um, this is a card that sees a lot of commander play and is a great reprint here. Um, every set in the block, fun fact, had a different Akroma. The first set had Akroma Angel of Wrath. The second set had Red Akroma Angel of Fury. And then Akroma's Memorial was in, in the third set. Kind of showing off the past Akroma, the alternate Akroma, and uh, the current state of Akroma, or, or futuristic state of Akroma, perhaps, with Akroma's Memorial. That's a great, great one to open up. Gives you all of Akroma's abilities, right? Elvish Mystic. Woo! Makes me so happy. I, this is one that we determined really early on and everyone just loved, right? It's Linor Elves finally gets this Elvish Mystic Buddy in the old card frame. This looks great. And I think I have a foil back here, which is Giant Dusk Wasp. Bam. Suspend that thing. And uh, another spidery token. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Seen a lot of these. Seen a lot of these. Anything we haven't seen yet? Not in the commons. Not in the uncommons. Here's the uh, here's our rare though, Singer Nosferatu. This makes that bat token I was showing you earlier. Let's uh, hide that over here somewhere. Um, that we've never been able to put in paper before. There it is. Here's the token that goes with it. I'll bring it right over. And uh, this is a really powerful limited card, by the way. It's very hard to kill off the Singer Nosferatu, given that you can just keep paying two mana to bring it back. It's actually, many people thought it was one of the best cards in Time Sparrow you could open. Um, so, definitely draft this if you see it, and uh, hopefully find that bad token too, right? Oh, and hey, it's another Mystic Confluence. What do you know? So now I've got two Mystic Confluences in this box. I will definitely prefer the foil one, <laughs> but uh, not going to be sad about having that old card frame one too at all. i got plenty of Commander decks. Mystic Confluence is a great card to have. All right, next pack here. Flipping through the cards that we know already. Reflex Sliver, first time seeing one of those. As I mentioned on the Firewake Sliver earlier, giving all your slivers haste is really good in the aggressive deck, and it's especially good with Gem Hide Sliver because they can tap for mana immediately. So um, this this because of the fact you want exactly one of. They don't stack very well. So you want enough in your deck that you will find one usually. So, you know, if I'm drafting slivers, I'd like to have two of this kind of effect normally, um, and usually, usually not more. And Reflex Sliver is not amazing, but it, it, it fills that role um, just fine. Strength in Numbers, this is a wonky card um, to me. So it pumps a creature for attacking creatures. That looks pretty straightforward. The, even though it, it's kind of more of a white thing to do, but whatever. The weird thing about it is you can also play it on defense, counting your opponent's attacking creatures. So keep that in mind, that it can be a pretty good defensive combat trick too if your opponent has a bunch of attacking stuff. It's not just an offensive one. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty unusual card in that respect. Giant Dusk Wasp. Yep, seen all you. Scrib Ranger, I previewed this. This was a card I have a very soft spot for. I have played this card in Constructed, in a, a, a green-blue deck. This was a very popular card in Block Constructed. Um, and uh, it just does everything, right? Uh, I think there's stories about Billy Moreno, who was a, you know, a pro tour 
Pro Tour runner-up, um, playing this card, playing against this card, and just making mistakes every single turn after it came down because creatures were getting untapped. You can activate this ability on both players' turn, by the way, right? So it's really easy to like make your stuff always untapped or reuse your, uh, reuse your tap abilities. All kinds of stuff going on with the Scrib Ranger. So this is a card I recommend picking up pretty highly, and uh, it, it's quite strong. Uh, here's Tysis. That's how this is pronounced. You might be playing this card and wondering how to say it. Tysis is your answer here. So uh, this is a pretty interesting card in that um, you can hard cast it, but it's often hard to do because of the quad black mana that you need. Um, but the suspend five when you do it means that your opponent might not have the thing in play you want to hit with it. So there's a big mini game with this card about if your opponent's going to race it or not and exactly what's in play. And if they don't have anything, keep in mind, you'll have to cast this on one of your own creatures. Um, so this is this is a card that I always think about when I think of Time Spiral block. Um, it, it's, a, it's a pretty good card. I still recommend taking it because if your opponent doesn't play stuff for a while, that's just good for you. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely you never want to have to tice this your own thing. So just be very careful to not accidentally run into a situation where you hit your own, say, Dirkwood Balath, right? I've done that before. It was, it was not a good experience. Salt Blast, another thing being tried in Planar Chaos, was just uh, on the non-white theme that um, uh, Sunlands had, was just destroy a non-white permanent. That's pretty cool. Um, can even hit lands. Did not continue this theme theme along, but shows up here in this set as a reprint. For our rare, we've got Sarah Avenger. This is a card that is great to Aether Vial in. Aether Vial does not stop a Sarah Avenger. Um, so that, that's one thing that I'll note. Or you can use a Scout's Warning with it too. There's a few ways to cheat this into play. But even just in, uh, you know, waiting until turn four and casting this for, for a, a fair cost is interesting. I'm actually surprised that we have not um, done more cards like this. I think it's interesting to have cards that you can't cast for your first several, several turns. So um, maybe we should make more cards like this. I'm inspired now. And uh, for bonus sheet, we've got Nature's Claim. This looks so good in the frame. I was tweeting about this the other day, how I think this card just is like, it feels like it just belongs in this frame. Um, and what? Holy smokes. Whoa. That is hot. That is so good. I'm I'm flipping out right now. I gotta I gotta, feel like I gotta get a sleeve or something. I don't have any at the handy. Uh, wow, 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 wow! Foil old frame chalice of the void. That is amazing. Look at that. just look at that. Uh, I uh, this has been a successful box. Gotta say, I feel like uh, I, I'm very happy with this box. I could not open the rest of the packs and still be satisfied. Wow. That is awesome. That is just awesome. And then a class bright token. Wow. It takes a lot to silence me. This foil does it. Unbelievable. This set gives me so many feelings. All right, we still got uh, nine packs, it looks like, left to go through. Wow. Wow, I, uh, I'm feeling something good. I'm feeling good right now. All right, let's get through these last nine packs. Uh, Deadly Grub, first time this is showing up. This is where that 6-1 insect token goes, by the way. If you let this thing fade away, you will get your 6-1 green insect creature token. Uh, Sporloth Ancient... Ordered, seen all you, seen all you. Felon of Havenwood. Here is our, your black green commander for your sapperling deck. And yeah, if you're drafting any kind of sapperling deck, this is great. You don't need the black even necessarily. Just playing it as a gr two green, two two with that text, totally fine to do. Um, but uh, if you if you can access black, of course, it's great to be able to turbocharge your your thalids. And for a bonus sheet card, we have Teamer Ascendancy. Very nice. Uh, one thing that we were trying to do um, was uh, this little gag was put in a card from Cons of Tarkir because that world is lost to time. This is a set that messes with time, and uh, th this was a, one of the main cards that, that was selected. Teamer Ascendancy is um, 
is that, and uh, Tassiger is another one in that space of a thing that was kind of lost to time. Although he technically existed in this timeline, but uh, his fate did not go not go super well. All right, uh, Skirk Shaman basically intimidate, but not exactly intimidate because if you change his color, he no longer does that. Um, this was a thing that was tried in Planar Chaos, riffing on uh, what we saw almost with Amru Seekers in the first set, which is a pretty pretty funny reference to a thing that we saw in the first set there. And uh, yeah, this is a solid card to play as a tough to block three mana two two. Seeing these. Grinning Ignis. If you're playing Storm, this is the this is a card you want. Um, it is very easy to get your Storm count very high with this card. Um, because basically for the cost of one mana, you can cast it over and over again and increase your Storm count. So this is like a key card for Storm. Grab this to go with your Empty the Warrens. It is huge. Or it just ramps you, by the way. You can just play this on turn three, and then on turn four, pick it back up to your hand and have six mana. So there's that too. Deadly Grub... Seen all these, seen all these. There's Flagstones of Troke here. I just previewed this card yesterday. Cool little reprint. And then for my bonus sheet card, we've got Young Pyromancer. Yes. When this card showed up at my desk, this is one of the first uh, cards that we got back as a as a test um, many months ago. You'd be back before even uh, COVID started. Um, and I ran around the building showing to people I was so excited, and everyone loved it. So... Yeah, this is a card that means a lot to me. I have I love this card in the old frame. It just feels right, which I know I keep saying, um, but as an old-time player, it just feels so good to me. And um, I look forward to seeing this on the Legacy Tables uh, near you. And there's another Linwar Elf token. All right, I count six more packs. We're in the home stretch here. <clears throat> all right. What do we got? Seeing all you... By the way, we're still finding comments we haven't seen. Tromp the domains. If you ever played Time Spiral Block, this is a card that you lived in fear of. This is one of the strongest cards in the set. People were taking this over rares quite quite frequently. Um, this is Overrun, which is already a very good limited card, <clears throat> but more splashable, and sometimes better because you can tromp for four or five. In fact, it's not uncommon if this is in your deck to just play a couple extra basic lands of other types to try and tromp for more. Um... Yeah, this card is defining. Like, you will want to take this, you want to slam this, especially considering the green decks go wide with cards like uh, Sapperlings. Yeah, you want Trump the Domains lying around. Um, so, this is a very powerful card. Muck Drub, despite being really fun to say, this is a card I like a lot. Um, not just for Madness decks, although it has Madness. I, I like this card anywhere. Because it, it just redirects target to it. So it's a great way to steal a pump spell in the middle of combat. A redirect a removal spell away from um, a creature you wanted to, to save. Also, if you just want to say Muck Drub a lot, which which I love doing. Maybe you like saying Muck Drub too. I don't know. But uh, I've always enjoyed this card's name. Poor little Muck Drub. It's a cute, cute little guy. Look at him. Cute, cute little beastie. A wee beastie. Anyway. Uh, sudden Shock. Many great stories rise from one player being dead while the other player has Sudden Shock in their hand and slow playing them. I will not talk about the ethics of doing that here. I would suggest that you not do so. But I would suggest also that you take this card, because it's uh, just a shock for two mana. Your opponent can't respond to it, which is pretty nice. Living End. This is a card which has seen a lot of play in Modern. Um, has, has an entire deck named around it. Finally getting a reprint here. Uh, this is Living Death on a Suspend card. And then Arch of Arazka, allowing you to uh, ascend... And a cobalt token. All right, getting down to the end here. Let's see if we find any goodies here. All right, seeing all you. Probably seeing all this stuff at this point. Lotus Bloom, very nice. So if you go uh, to your store, you can get an old frame Lotus Bloom, the only card in Time Spar Block that appears in the old frame. We did that as a special um, promo for your stores. But it also appears it just says normal in this set. This is a card that has gone on to do quite a bit. It's a Lotus. I mean, it has a lot to live up to. And whether you're um, reshaping for this card or using it to cast your Dragon Storms or whatever nefarious thing you're doing with your three free mana, this card has shown up to be quite a staple. A Johnny's Pride Mate. Nice, uh, nice reprint here. This is just such a popular card. Made a lot of sense to put back in this in the, the old card frame as a white card. And then Foil Sinew Sliver. Another, another uh, white bear that is quite popular. Foil slivers are always nice to open, though. 
Those are great. There's always a sliver die that can use them. All right, what do we got here? Prime Plasma, 4C. Fury Sliver, this is one we have not seen yet. Gives all your slivers double strike. Um, should be pretty clear why that's good if you're going wide with your sliver deck, which you always are. Um, this is one that I am happy to take. Unlike the bat the Battering Sliver, the six mana sliver, it's okay, the Trample one. The Fury Sliver is one that I'm very happy to have. So, um, yeah, I, I can definitely suggest uh, grabbing this if you're playing slivers highly. Double strike will serve you well at killing off your opponent. Stormcloud Jin. Um, this is a mashup card from Time Spiral Block. This mashes up Electric Eel plus Cloud Jin. Yep, that's right. Two cards which you would never think would go together in one place. I don't know how it was determined to do that, um, but Time Spiral Block is full of references. So there you go, Stormcloud Jin. Riftmark Knight. This creates that wonky token I showed you earlier. So much text on this card. Uh, Mangara of Corridor with the new artwork. That's cool. And the new legendary crown. Great to have Mangara back. Momentary blinking. This, this, uh, this guy is where you want to be. And then Mortify for our time shifted card. Very cool. Mortify is, this card just looks right, right? It looks right out of Mirage or Visions. I think it's always cool, though, is when you open up the old card frame card to try and identify what era of magic it looks like it could be from. And that's, like, definitely a Mirage Visions era to, card to me. Um, you know, we wanted to pick some cards that were just, like, staples that show up in places like Cubes, right? Maybe they're not legacy cards, but you just see them often enough and they're ca uh, popular casual social cards that they show up often enough. Mortify is one that made a, a ton of sense for that. All right, skipping past the cards we've seen, which is most of them at this point. Celestial Crusader, this is a, uh, a really important card for any white beatdown deck that you draft. But also that split second uh, on the pump means that it's a great way to get around stuff like removal spells that your opponent might, um, you know, they might be waiting on a two damage spell. If you try and pump your creature, it's a two toughness creature. Well, Celestial Crusader says, says no to that, which is pretty cool. Pendlehaven Elder, this is a reference to the card Pendlehaven, which makes sense. Pendlehaven gives a 1-1 one, one creature plus 1 plus 2. This gives all your 1-1s one, plus 1 plus 2. This card is really great if you're drafting a Sapperling deck. That's where you want to use this. Uh, otherwise, it's usually not, not that strong, although it can block as a 2-3 by blocking and tapping, so keep that in mind. But um, especially good if you're drafting Sapperlings. Cautery Sliver, this is a, is a great sliver to have around. You don't use this one that often, the last ability, but the first ability... Uh, allowing your, your slivers to ping is huge, especially considering that if your opponent's going to use removal spells on your slivers, as those jerks often do, Cautery Sliver can fire them off. Rare, we have a sliver here. Speaking of a sliver that will help you sacrifice your other slivers, Pulmonic Sliver. Uh, this makes your slivers Ivory Gargoyle, I believe is the card, that um, has flying and goes back to the top of your library. And, um, it basically replaces, replaces your draw. You have to be careful to not get uh, Ivory Gargoyle locked. It's not quite, it's, it's a little different than Ivory Gargoyle. That one you could pay five mana in exile, but same kind of premise. An Exquisite Firecraft. This is a, a card we put in here because we saw it in a bunch of cubes. I think at the time it was seeing a bit of legacy play or modern play. I don't think it's really seeing that play anymore. Um, but uh, still, see, still see some cube action. All right, two packs left. And if you've made it this far, if you stayed with this the whole time, I am impressed. Please post in the comments down below if you made it the whole time. I would, I am so impressed that nearly three hours. Um, Folks are sticking with it the whole time, but there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. Uh, Mycologist, a white card. This was, um, it's a color shifted version of, I think it's a farmer, some farmer from a Fallen Empires or something like that in white. Fun fact about that card. Dryad Arbor at, at Rare. This has been a card that has caused all kinds of uh, headaches over the years. Um, this one is hopefully unrecognizable enough in the land row. It's got, you know, that color indicator. It, it doesn't really look like a forest as much, hiding out in the land row, as the From the Vault 1 did. Um, very wonky card. I don't think we'll be making more land creatures anytime soon, given how um, much of a headache this card has caused. And then Knight, oops, Knight of the Reliquary. Very nice. And moving into the last pack here, what do we got? We have... A bunch of cards we've seen before. Trump the Domains, Muck Drub, Sudden Shock, and Life and Limb, second one of the box. <laughs> uh, sorry, judges. And then my final card, the time shifted card, is going to be Primeval Titan. How fitting. I got to preview this card. I'm so glad to finally open one up here. And then uh, a token 
to finish it out there as a goblin. Well, this has been quite the rush. This has been three hours. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a lot, a lot to uh, to go through. If you just want to skip, to, if you were just skipping to the end to check everything out, here's some of the the hits, including this, which I'm just flipping out about. Truly, I cannot say how ecstatic I am to open that up. That is nuts. I'm sure someone in the comments is going to say that my box is rigged or something. Seriously, I got sent one box. I don't have any extra time spot remastered cards lying around. I just cracked this open. And the fact that I opened up both of these, I mean, the Chalice especially, although this is a card I'm quite happy to have too, is, uh, is really amazing. It makes me quite happy. So that is my box opening. Thank you all for sticking with me. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy Time Spiral Remastered when it hits in just a couple weeks. It has been a labor of love. This set is truly a love letter to magic with all the old card frame stuff. And I hope we get to do more stuff in the retro frame in the future thanks to this set. I will talk with you again on Monday. It has been a fun couple weeks of Time Spiral Remastered previews. In the meantime, though, may you just enjoy looking through the set of Time Spiral Remastered and seeing all of your favorites in one place, or at least many of them. You got this. And this is a big one. I mean, it's truly giant. It's a card you all have asked for since you first heard about the bonus sheet. And that card is Primeval Titan. The only one of the five Titan cycle to show up in Time Spiral Remastered, this card is a modern staple. 